subscribe, notification bell, all. Hello and welcome. This is Gray Hughes of Gray Hughes Investigates on YouTube. This channel evaluates all aspects of true crime. As you are aware, videos and live streams in this genre often discuss elements of crime that may be disturbing to some viewers. If necessary, take the precautions needed to avoid these feelings. Factual information related to cases is the key to fostering rational true crime discussions. Fortunately, you will find that here. Please hit the like button only once. Share the video and subscribe if you like my content. Thank you very much for watching. It's a house! This guy may be like the dumbest person on the face of the earth. Come on, man. What's wrong with you? There's mosquitoes the size of bald eagles in that dead gum swamp. Did you hear what I said? You know, that's just one step above stupid. Have you lost the last three brain cells, or do you just have cabbage for brains? Hey, what's going on, free? Verifying information in the, the two women that are missing case. Which is the uh, Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly. What's going on? Yeah, I mean, I'm not bear searching, but we're just trying to. Oh, wow, are these all. I gotta move all these things. Hold on. Jeez. Those are all supposed to be up in the uh, Sebastian Rogers folder. Up there. Okay. Uh, Blue and Chloe, they're just sleeping. They just ate food. All right, well, so this show is just like any other show, you guys. Got the goal to reach. We got the show to do and hoping to get there. Have they found the two women? No. Right. Okay, so there's some, we'll just play some of this right here. Let's do that one first. Now, by the way, in the Sebastian Rogers, because I was looking at what clip that um, hell, I forgot her name. Nancy Grace put out. You know, it's about the how Sebastian didn't want to stay at the house anymore. You know, with the with the dad, he told he told his biological dad, "I want to stay here," and she made it seem like it's because there was something horrendously wrong there and that's why the I don't know anyways it's I, I just get tired of it 
just was like a one big sales pitch. And then the dad starts crying, saying, I wish I had just... What do you mean, dude? You're, you're falling into her, the, the, the game that they're playing right there. You don't know what uh, why your kid said that. Maybe you even guessed right that it was because you're... Um, you said that... Uh, um, like you're you're less strict. Like he can, he's totally free to do whatever he wants with you. And maybe that was it. But I don't know, man. I I, I just get sick of that crap. Well, they're they're not convicted of anything. They're they haven't been accused of anything. But you know, put the butt in afterwards. I wish they would all just drop it and start trying to look at a different angle. You know, the law enforcement that seems to be looking at a different angle. I told the court, I don't know what that means, Renee. Almost was a jury sitting on a chair so close to the defense attorney didn't like that I was into true crime. He asked, who on YouTube? <laughs> and you said, Gray Hughes investigates. Awesome. No, I think it's working, so I'm not sure why it's not... Uh, on the main screen. Oh, there it is, right there. All right. So you guys were at zero right now. Can, it, can we at least get started so it feels like we're in progress, moving? All right. Let's hear what this lady says. Story that has been making nationwide headlines that I want to catch you up on because I've been looking deeply into this case of two missing women. Totally. I'm leaving our new student now, kind of loud here, and wanted to give you this update on what I know about this situation because there's just been so much interest in the case of Veronica and Jillian. So Veronica Butler, Jillian Kelly, as you know, two women who went missing from Hugoton, Kansas. So Southwest Kansas, last seen on Saturday, they were going to go and grab Veronica's kids to take them to a birthday celebration, but they never made it to getting to the kids. The kids I'm told they're okay, no people at risk, but Veronica and Jillian are still missing. And the part that's really peculiar, of course, about all things, if you've been following the headlines here, is that the vehicle they were in, Veronica's vehicle, was found in this rural area on the road um, over in the, across the state line into Northwest Oklahoma, so the Panhandle area. Um, just super rural area. Wow, I was Rhonda, looking there at you go. Google That's Maps, how you started. Trying Come to on, let's go. Through that <laughs> part of the state. And I was like, gosh, you know, what had happened? What went on with their disappearance? And so we're entering day four, and people are asking what's going on. I have a lot of people asking questions. I did get a chance, if you looked at my videos on TikTok, Facebook, you. You know, it was kind of uh, sad earlier. I was looking at an old video. I was looking at the, the Cleo Smith uh, interviews. Uh, the parents, because I'm going to show you guys here in a minute. And uh, I saw Jen H. commenting on those videos. It was like, ah, oh, God. <laughs> it just made me feel, uh, made me feel bad. She's all, oh, even then, she's just so nice, you know. YouTube, uh, and a, a conversation. And thank you so much, uh, Rhonda Lanham and January Jop. And she said, let's get started. And he said, Thanks for all you do. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. ...with the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation. And they told me, you know, basically all of the, the kind of the, what we call the nuts and bolts, like those just simple facts of, you know, last seen Saturday, vehicle over on this rural part of the state, all these different things. I've had some follow-up conversations with the OSBI to see, well, what's going on and are people at risk? And there's other things that have taken place too. One, I'm told that the community is not at risk, at least from the OSBI and their perspective. I will say that the school district, so there's a school not too far from where their vehicle was found, they did go on basically like 
uh, a lockdown situation. So they have it basically schools going on and everything, but they're not letting people kind of like in and out of the building sort of situation. Lockout is maybe the best way to phrase it. Um, they're just taking as much of a precaution um, with the situation there just to make sure that everyone's safe. Um, and that's certainly understandable, but certainly it's raised some eyebrows as to what's happened and people just asking even more questions. You know, I did, when I talked to the OSBI about this case, I asked, you know, is there a threat to the community? How was the vehicle found? All these other questions that have popped up a lot on social media. Again, no threat to the community. They didn't elaborate as to how the vehicle was found other than it was found. And they didn't elaborate on specifics with the you know, the relationship of these ladies and going to the area. The church, one of their churches has said that basically the women are acquaintances um, and one was just going to support the other. I found some interesting information online and working to confirm it, but really we can all report certain things that are relevant to an investigation and things that we can confirm um, that would be valid to share with the public. There's been a lot of speculation as for um, Veronica and her ex and what has happened with you know, the custody of their kids and their relationship and, you know, things that he's faced um, and, and everything legally and such and criminally, if there is anything to focus on there. And there's nothing that I can share with you today about that because nothing, at least from what I'm told, speaking to investigators from, and I've spoken to, you know, contacted Hugoton Police, the Texas County Sheriff's Office, where the, the county where the vehicle was found and the OSBI, which is the lead and pretty much is where I need to go to with a case like this. And, you know, nothing that I've asked about has, they, they say nothing is pertinent to the investigation or nothing they can confirm with the investigation. But I will say the OSBI has been very um, good with us with getting details almost instantly. If I contact them, I get as much information as they can share pretty quickly. So I'm really grateful for that. Um, certainly a case that a lot of people have their eyes on, but I wanted to share at least this perspective with you of what I'm doing. And I'm working on stuff every day, um, reaching out to different people and just trying to give you all the very latest and make this story, at, at least for me as an advocate for missing people, as I've shared, you know, thousands of stories with missing in Kansas over the past six years. Um, keeping a story in the headlines is really important to closing a case. And these women are so... I know, now they're, now they're friends and she was just going for support. You know, I don't know if it was through the church or whatever, but it sounded like it was more of an official uh, assignment before, didn't it? it? Sounded like she was a, uh, a, you know, like she can only have supervised visits, so this was the supervisor. But is that even the case at all, or like wh what's going on here? Fortunate to have so many people. I mean, they had a vigil this week. They've had people at their churches and within this community of about what, not even four thousand people. I mean, just really rallying around them, trying to no, figure we know, out what we know, happened baby. to them and if they're okay, <laughs> making sure that. I always think it's funny when people come in and tell us the really basic stuff. We've been following the case since the beginning. We know that she only had supervised visits. Right. And the dad was in rehab. We know that. Yeah, we know all that stuff. You know, but my theory is that whoever somebody related to who, uh, where they were supposed to meet, who they were supposed to meet has something to do with this. Because, I mean, what are the odds of that? That you're going to go pick up your kids for a, like a supervi supervised visit or whatever the hell you want to call it. And, and so she goes and visits and she goes missing or, you know, they go missing during that trip. So there's only a few people that would know where they were going. Now, if you want to think it's a random thing, maybe, but man, when you have this whole contentious uh, custody issue going on, I know that people want, don't want to go, oh yeah, I, I just, that's the only thing that's, that we know right now that makes sense. It could be something totally different than that, but that seems to make the most sense currently. 
other people in the community are okay. We're gonna stay on top of this. I have a few more phone calls I'd like to make today and in the coming days, hopefully I don't even have to make them. I'd love to see a resolution with this case as soon as possible, but I just wanted to yeah, let you know what I'm working We've on with this. And if you do have questions, feel free to share them with me and any comments on any of the social media threads that you're seeing this video on. You know, I try to answer things as best I can. Um, again, I can only share what we can confirm and things that are really relevant to the investigation. A lot of chatter on the internet certainly right now, um, but again, if we can keep that conversation going, I think that's just the most important thing because I think for Jillian and Veronica, their families, they just want to find them and they want to bring them home safe. I appreciate you all um, being with me with this. Can this is uh, Annette Lawless. The conversation here about my perspective as a storyteller and hopefully you can keep sharing this story whether it's this video other things that you see online but just keep in mind though some of the stuff that you see on social media may not be the most accurate or no way are you kidding me yeah. i would actually say that also for the mainstream media and the regular news outlets they're not that accurate sometimes either or maybe a smidge of the truth and so i just think it's really important to lean on i will say they are more accurate than the general youtubers out there journalists like myself we go through this vetting process we want to make sure things are accurate and fair and that's what i'm trying to do here being as transparent as i can about this investigation that's really captured the heart of so many i appreciate you being here today now there you go that and let's see the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation says foul play is suspected now so that's a change in the case of two missing Kansas women 27 year old Veronica Butler and 39 year old Jillian Kelly the investigation is ongoing Uh, based on the information obtained from the victim's vehicle, our investigation believes there was evidence to indicate foul play. So that, I think that sort of verifies the blood spatter or you know the blood at the scene that somebody mentioned. You know that seemed like they had been there. There was people in various groups out there chatting. So now that seems to verify that. Uh, it's hard to verify that there's foul play other than blood. You know, you might think, okay, you left some items in the car or whatever, but that doesn't necessarily mean that. Blood would absolutely indicate that there was some foul play. How do you, th how do you know, Gray? Maybe she just cut her finger and was taken to the hospital. Uh, we are still searching for these victims, and there are no arrests at this time. We ask that anyone, so now they're being called victims, and there is foul play. Uh, OSB has told us they had eyes on them. What are they talking about? She shared a few more interesting pieces. Uh, I asked if Butler, Rickman, oh, uh, children were safe. And they said that they had eyes on them. So they're watching to make sure that the kids are safe. She shared a few more interesting pieces of information that I need to vet. She also stated that no family will be, stated that no family will be, most likely be doing any type of interviews that could hinder the investigation. I'm assuming various YouTubes and podcasts. <laughs> okay, see? You see how the, like, uh, what's going on now, though, you guys? Because of the irresponsibility of YouTubers out there, and we all know who those ones are, right? Uh, these family members aren't going to be, um, you know, People don't trust, and, you know, to be honest with you, they shouldn't. You know, I, I've seen it. It sucks, you know. I, I'd love to have somebody come on and just ask them normal questions, and we've had that many times in the past in, in different cases that nobody's interested in, so they didn't see it. But we've interviewed family members quite a few times. Hey, thank you so much, Kathy Chapin. Very kind, very kind.
Thank you, everybody, so far for all your generous support. Appreciate it. I spoke with the grandmother of Wrangler Cole. Okay, so the grandmother of... So that's like pretty far, you know, that's like, okay, so he's got a mother and then, you know, that far away. I mean, your grand, great-grandparents of the kids. And so it says, I spoke with the grandmother of Wrangler Cole Rickman. Rickman is Veronica's ex uh, father of her children so he's the ex but he's also the father of the children how many children are there three children is that it uh, grandmother confirmed the below she said that Rickman was checked into a rehab facility on the 22nd through the 30th um, says no contact and cannot leave any uh, leave for any outings from the facility for 30 days and has to be there for six months, OSBI confirmed he was there. I asked if the Butler Rickman children were safe. She said, OSB has told us they had eyes on them. That was probably before that last screenshot. I did him out of order. Oh, so two, a boy and a girl. Okay. <clears throat> right. That's what I originally thought, but I thought a minute ago I just read three. I don't know why. Anyways... Um, Man, I, I, I don't know. It just feels like it's got to be related to her going <laughs> to visit the kids. Don't you guys think that? I mean, okay, let, let's just do a poll. You guys love polls, right? Welcome, Lady Creations. Let's see. I don't know, I'm trying to figure out a way to word this because you always get, well, I thought it was, so, you know, I always have to get it exactly right. Uh, are they missing because of the custody issue? That's really about it. And here we go, there's the poll. Start answering. I bet it's going to be 80, 10, 20. And the other 20 will be the Social media trolls. <laughs> just kidding. <clears throat> I, I don't know what the answer is here. I just feel like that's it. I don't know, chicken wing. It's got. I think it's got to be related to it. I think it might not be the grandmother, but somebody connected to that trip. I mean, I mean, the odds of it just being a random killing or, or for some other reason associated with her on that particular day when they're driving and they're almost right in the area where you're supposed to be meeting the kids and they all go missing. Doesn't that just seem almost... I mean, it's right up there with Keegan Klein and Richard Allen. <laughs> okay, it's really... Crazy. Richard, that one's even worse, but. Hey, thank you very much. Lee Reddy. I'm not, Lee Reddy. Is that right? Thank you for the coverage on the cases. Sub for over six years. Really? Wow. Six years. Well, you should be a channel member then. You'd have had a, you'd be like the OG types, man. You'd have like uh, 12, 70 something. <laughs> Uh, I don't even know how many, what's the maximum number of months you could have this? I don't know. That's what, I, that's what I'm getting at, Kyle, uh, uh, Chicken Wing, but I don't really have a, uh, you know, I can't say that for certain, you know. But here, here's what I would look at in this case. I mean, this is just my own sort of just 
You know, it might be absolutely unrelated. This is just a theory, everybody. Don't say, see, Gray was accusing. This is just the only thing that I can come up with is something like this. See, uh, Veronica was trying to get more uh, visitation and becoming a little bit more like there's a possibility that she should, should be getting more visitation. And, and that means she's on the rise in terms of custody, right? She was trying to do that. And maybe she was working on that. And maybe even with the friend here, the supervisor who's a friend who probably maybe even reports to the courts is on her side and they're really trying hard. And then lo and behold, the husband gets put in a rehab facility. And what do you think is going to happen there? In those six months, when, those kids, when he's in that rehab facility, can't even get out for 30 days, he's going to feel helpless to be able to uh, protect his rights to have custody of those kids, right? And so isn't it a miracle that somehow they go missing just a few weeks before she was supposed to have another hearing on the case? I don't know. That's, that to me seems like the best angle. And he it's obviously not him, right, because he's in there. But is there somebody connected to him somewhere that led to this happening? It's, I think it's got to be related to the children, the custody. They did lock down the school. Isn't that a little interesting? Yeah, I think it would. I think, uh, I think if you had children and one of your, the other parents was able to convince the courts to take them from you, I think you would go absolutely nuts. Every one of you. And that's why it's one of the biggest things, especially if you cared about them. There's other cases where the guy, it's usually the guy in, in those cases, doesn't care at all about the kid. Kids, he doesn't want to have to pay child support, and then they'll do something violent to keep all of that from happening. This one's a combination of them. It could be, though, a lot of times people want to have the kids so that they don't have to pay child support and maybe perhaps even get money from somebody else. The whole concept of child support is, I think, is it's got to be revamped. I think it's ridiculous uh, the way it's done. Yeah, let's see. Always children and custody makes people insane. Yeah. True that. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. Yeah, so let's take a look at the uh, area again here. So this is somewhere in here. Now, there was somebody else that said maybe right around in this area. It could be, but either way, it's right at this intersection here. It's absolutely nothing going on. Is this a way that they were driving and they were sort of told to pull over? It's interesting because apparently somebody said that one of the windows was broken in. Yeah, so if a window was broken in, does that mean they were driving by and shot through the window? Or does it mean that they got them to pull over, but they kept their windows rolled up and then they smashed in the window and got into the car? Like you could definitely, for example, pull in front of somebody, make them stop, right? And, you, and look at, look at right here. Do you think you can, wouldn't you feel safe pulling somebody over right here? Because you can see like a mile in all directions. You could see that nobody was coming from way over there. or, And this might just be where they were dumped. The, the, the vehicle was dumped anyway. <clears throat> let's, let's do that poll too. Oh, I got to end the one up there. So 86-14, yes, uh, that's related to custody. Let's see. Um, was the Kia 
found where the attack occurred. I think that's a good way to do it. Hey, thanks so much, Michelle Kobe. There we go. Right there. Was the key of found where the attack happened? Which would imply, uh, and so that's a good way to word it because then you can say, it's no if the attack happened somewhere else and the car was just dumped there. You guys get, do you understand the question or? Okay. There was blood found there, had to be attacked. Well, no, they didn't say it was outside, they said in the vehicle. Baby K, VK, you gotta pay attention a little bit better. Let's see, leave your DNA on the like button. There you go. Everybody hit that like button. We're all already struggling in the like button section. We can see right now there's only 594 likes. So here we go, we're gonna have to do it again. It's your fault that we are doing the auctioneer. I'm tired of it now. Hit the like button, hit the like button, 10, 20, 25, 30, hit the like button, 40. Do I hear 40, 45, 50, hit the like button, 40, 50, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, just sing the world, just hit the like button, use your nose, use your toes, use your boogers, whatever. All right. Anyways, you guys can do it. Come on. Very simple. You show up to a live stream, hit the like button, help out the channels. I guess if everybody did it, then it would be sort of a wash, but. Uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah, press the like button with your boogers. Okay, everybody, that's my new one. I'm going to have a t-shirt. Hit the like button with your boogers. All right. The auctioneer is my favorite. Okay. <laughs> Look at that. That's a hit. Use your boogers. Look at it. It's a hit for everybody. I think that's a new thing. Okay, so the, the vehicle's somewhere right around in this area on one of these, you know, one, nobody's ever got back to me where I've asked people that would have known. And uh, the only thing I could say is they thought it was headed towards down into this area, Gaiman. So if the car is right there, if it's heading that way, does that mean it was on this road or this way? I mean, I think you can deduce that the car was facing either that direction, east, we're south on this one. Only with the auctioneer tack. That's right, you gotta say it really fast. Yeah. <laughs> Sneak it in there. Use your toes, use your nose. Use something for God's sakes. But hit the like button. Man, Man that was weird, Gray. You said buggers. You, you're calling me weird, Mary Lou? <laughs> Jesus. Josh Gray, that wasn't very nice. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> poor, poor Mary Lee. Uh, Gray, do you know if there was physical evidence found outside the car? I don't know. Well, I heard about the uh, a bloody hammer and then somebody else threw in a bloody axe. Next thing you hear is a bloody machete and then a bloody bazooka and then a bloody tank, and then a, a bloody aircraft carrier. It's just gonna keep going on and on and on. It's like it just, everyone adds a little extra. Do you think that there was a, a, a hammer and a, a ax? Give me a break. All right. Who knows, maybe it was in the car and it fell out. That's just what somebody said. It was one of the same people that said that they found blood in the car. Could just be totally bogus, okay? Okay, Kelly C. That's a little little too much there. I think that's one of those people that uh, look at the date at the account creation if you can. Make sure to remove that comment, but also um, can you look at the date on that one? Mods, you're a little bit slow again. All right. I definitely think it was planned by the dad. Yeah, I don't know if I I can't say anything that's definitely. You know what I mean? Like, I can't say it's definitely anything. I'm saying that's a theory that I have. 
And I've had it since the first night because it seems like now. So that they have a really contentious relationship. It sounds, doesn't it? I mean, would you guys agree with that? That it sounds like it's a very contentious relationship. Like they are battling. They don't get along. Uh, she apparently accused him of sexually, you know, assaulting the kids and doing all these crazy things and there were, it was all bogus they couldn't uh, the courts uh, you know did a thorough investigation and she made it all up just to get him and then um, all of the allegations towards her however have been true so that's why he had custody and she didn't but this might be the moment where the tables start to turn and you can see it sort of being almost like a one of those feud like a family feud type thing like here's this family and here's this family and you're not going to take our kids away from, you know, you know what I mean? I can just totally see that. Especially out here in, uh, I think it's Oklahoma, right? On this little panhandle. Right up in here. It's kind of weird how they draw these maps. I mean, why didn't they just go over here and, you know, just kind of take a little bit from Texas over there? You know, Amarillo, I'm sure they don't really care about that too much. Well, here's the reason, Gray. Now, what I was reading about that. All right, guys, let's get that like button hit. We're only at 276. I don't want to think that the other 300 of you are trolls. I mean, that's amazing. 320 people can't even bother to hit the like button. Unbelievable. But yeah, this, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the crybaby voice. Yeah. It's probably the right term. I know who says that. Soy. Who is that guy? Yeah. Forgot his name. <clears throat> So how's everybody doing tonight? Anyways, I think that's kind of uh, the running theory. I don't really have much more to add to the story. I know that her family, Veronica's family, has a lot of crazy, you know, like her brother um, has been, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on with him. With I, Apparently he assaulted the two children of his sister, which is Veronica. He's just a lot younger than she is. And then he also like assaulted um, another sibling of his. I mean, this guy is a dangerous person, I think. I think if you, the, the, the court system needs to have a strict monitoring of that individual. And I mean for like ever, to be honest with you. Uh, this guy sounds like somebody that's now way out there. And so, you know, is that part of it too? I mean, would you really want your kids to be the father? Let's say he's sitting there going, man, she's going to get custody and they're going to go back with one of her brothers who, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, man, I don't, you know, I wouldn't want that to happen. And then you get thrown into this rehab facility for six months, basically, in 30 days without being able to get out of it. You would probably feel helpless. Uh, well, I just told you everything about it, April. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's no, there's no extra stuff. It's literally, uh, you know, Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly. Jillian Kelly is married to a pastor. Uh, if I go down to here, so this is the town that they live in, Hugotten. And Veronica lives in the town too. Veronica lives in this house right here. If you go down the street view, the vehicle likely that was found with blood in it is right there. That's a Kia. And this street view here is, uh, let's see, what is this? Uh, May of 2023, so not even a year ago. So I, I would bet you that that is the precise vehicle that was found there. 
that's missing them, I guess you could say. Then right here is where, where Jillian Kelly worked or lived, and her husband is a pastor at this church right here. Okay, there you go. And they just live right down the street in a house, and apparently she is friends with, maybe likely through the church, and maybe she is a supervisor for the courts. I mean, do you guys think she might be a supervisor for the courts and maybe they have a friendship together and that's a scary situation for the father of the kids because now he knows that she'll write these reports that perhaps aren't necessarily true because they're friends. Okay, yeah, so I think that they're, that's just what I think is probably, it looks like Zozo said yes there. So... They're probably friends, and she's the supervisor. And maybe they became friends. Um, you know, maybe at the very first time, let's just throw it out there, that Jillian was a supervisor for Veronica. And Veronica and them started talking. They became friends. Maybe they, she started going to the church with Jillian. And then now Jillian's really on Veronica's side and probably believes some of the stories she's telling uh, her about uh, the husband and or the not the husband the boy the, the ex-boyfriend that um, is the father of the kids so she starts believing that stuff and uh, he gets wind of it what the hell's his name again i forgot i don't have it it's wrangler rickman there you go yeah so wrangler gets wind of this and is a little nervous over time and now he's being put into rehab don't you find it a little interesting, just that part alone, that while he's in rehab and just before her hearing on custody or visitation rights, that she goes missing with the supervisor who is her friend. Man, you got to admit, that sounds just dodgy as hell. Come on, you guys. So there you go. See, April? All you have to do is that's, that's the story right there. Jillian lives right there. She's married to a pastor. And somebody said, I think the pastor did it. It's like, oh, God, what are you trying to make a, one of those made-for-TV movies? And then here is uh, Veronica's house. They were driving together. Uh, they, they were supposed to come down to either Four Corners or this Eva area here. I don't know which one. Nobody's ever clarified that to uh, pick up the kids. I actually think they were supposed to get them at the school here, right there. The school is right here. It's in Eva. Eva. Look at, see that little green outline? We did this on the show yesterday. That's Eva, and the school is literally uh, right on the edge of it. So maybe that's where they're going to pick up the kids for visitation, and the vehicle's just down the road right here. So, man, it almost feels like something happened in the parking lot. What day did this happen now? I, I, I guess that's something I don't remember. Let me see. Let me get one of the original articles here. This is March 30th, Texas County... Welcome to the Texas County Sheriff's Department and request the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation to investigate the suspicious disappearance of two women. 27-year-old Veronica C. Butler and 39-year-old Lillian D. Kelly were traveling together to pick up children. The missing persons alert states they never made it to pick up location. Yeah, it feels like it might be like on the 29th. Um, hmm. I don't know. I don't have the date here. Does anybody have the date? Because the 29th, that's pretty interesting, right? Because he got put into the rehab on the 22nd. And then seven days later, she goes missing. With her buddy, who's the supervisor. Oh, maybe is this it? 
uh, no. So Veronica Butler, 27, 5'4", red hair, green eyes. She had on blue short sleeve shirt, denim shorts, and hey dudes something or other. Let's, let's play Dangered this. Endangered missing persons alert is still in place out of Oklahoma. The Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation has taken over the case and is investigating what they call a suspicious disappearance. 27-year-old Veronica C. Butler and 39-year-old Jillian D. Kelly were traveling together to pick up children on Saturday. The alert says they never made it to the pickup location. Their car was found abandoned near Highway 95 and Road L in Texas County. What day did they say? OSBI special Saturday. C. Butler and 39-year-old Jillian D. Kelly were traveling together to pick up children on Saturday. The alert says they never made it to the pickup location. Their car was found abandoned near Highway 95 and Road. Just a second. Okay, Saturday is the 30th. That's the day that the vehicle was found. Wouldn't it have been found the same day? It's, so Saturday is the 30th. Because Sunday is the 31st, and then would have been just before that. Say no to lulls, everybody. Say no to lulls. And, well, I know, but wouldn't you say, hey, dude, shoes below it? I mean, I don't think people just know, know what hey, dudes is. I mean, they gave an extra line for here. Why wouldn't they say it right below it? We do, Gray. We all know what hey dudes are. You should learn more about clothing, you bastard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll get right on top of that. I'll start uh, studying what uh, trendy names are. Hey dudes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, so it was the 30th. Let me just put that up here. And guess what? That's a Saturday, right? So they would have been, there would have been nobody at that school. Three. There we go. <sighs> Man, will they look like Ugg boots? Good day, Usti Shrike. I don't know what that means. It's probably some bad word in in German. You can't afford hey dudes. All right, guys, I'm going to have to do my public service announcements because we've hit a lull. So if you're here and you're watching the channel on a nightly basis, the freaks help support the channel uh, using super chats, becoming channel members, uh, ad revenue is part of it too, which doesn't have anything to do with you guys really. And, um, you know, then during the month, we're able to help out. You know, I take a big short, a portion of my income each month and give it to various uh, true crime related charities. We have a DNA fund, a scholarship fund, etc. And the only way that happens is if you guys on a nightly basis are helping support the channel, uh, because then there's a, there's a certain point where it's, I have to have the funds to keep doing the show. You know, I just is what it is. So if you can, that'd be great. <laughs> uh, really, I haven't seen Hey Dudes. I'm gonna have to go look at it. Thanks, Kylie. Well, they look sort of like, uh, oh yeah, those are, Jesus. Those are, what were those shoes you used to wear if you were preppy or they were leather? Like top siders, there you go. Kind of look a little bit like that. And hopefully somebody heard what I just said. Yes, but can't remember the name. There was an up. I just said that there were top siders. Yeah. Yeah, Sperry top siders, right? You wear 501 jeans, Sperry top siders, sort of a dress shirt with a sweater over the top with the, 
the lower part your your shirt could be out sticking out below the sweater yeah that was just the classic uh I don't know what that means, Piano Girl. You have to have full sentences in here. Nobody knows what you're talking about. Didn't get to finish my posts. Okay. Uh, uh, what does that mean? Okay, but it sounds like a German name when you say it out loud. It doesn't sound Italian. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you do this account. I'm sure you do. Mm -hmm. So what do you guys think? I think that's it, right? I mean, I don't really have another theory. Uh, law enforcement's doing their work. Uh, that's just what I'm thinking. It could be something totally different than that. It's the only thing that seems to kind of make any sort of sense given the circumstances here, though. Right. So anyways, they, they live here, and obviously they went to drive. I don't know if we know the time of day they were supposed to meet. And maybe they're supposed to meet at the school here, but the car was found right here in this area, headed towards this area, it looked like. Uh, likely blood found in the vehicle. Somebody claimed that there was a bloody hammer. Who the hell knows? Thanks, Alley Cake. I, apparently, you're, you were the only one that heard what I said. Thank you very much. Nothing worse than doing the public service announcement falling on deaf ears. <laughs> it's like, uh, this is what it sounds like in my head right here. Listen. Like that. Uh, and so they're not there, they're gone. And the only thing that makes sense to me is the relation. What the hell happened here? What, what is this? Looks like there was a fire or something. Is that? I'm not even sure if that's like legit. Man, that's weird. I mean, this doesn't even look real over here. Looks like a film problem. Like the film started eating away. Thank you, Whiskey Boots. Now kids don't even know how to to be how to tie shoes. So they are positive the dad was in I think so. Hey, thanks, Ginger Keys. And Mama four fifty seven Rose. Oh well thanks, Sandy Shirley. Okay, if you guys want to, let's want to move on. I don't really have much more. Well, let's, I mean, the phone lines are open. If anybody has questions or anything like that, you can always just, you know, call in, you know. I mean, I, I'd like it if people called in. It's, it's interesting, you know, listening to people that have different thoughts and you kind of work through things and, you know, maybe you can come up with something that's a little bit, has a better chance of being real. You know, every once in a while, um, you know, there's something that you go, oh, whoa, you know, and sometimes people have called in or typed something in the chat where it changes the trajectory of theories because it's something that's more plausible than uh, given the facts than maybe something I was saying. And then I immediately switch to that and then we move forward from that one. And then if something changes again, then you move off of that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I don't, I don't know if it's Four Corners or not. Other people said it was Eva. Some people said it was Four, you know, it's just. Does anyone know if the brother is in jail for abusing the kids? I don't think so. 602. You're in the gray zone. Hi, Gray. Uh, this is <laughs> Katrina from Missouri. Hey, how's it going? And I, I oh, how are you doing? Uh, I just wanted to comment on where you saw the black area there. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not for sure if this is what it is, but like I live in Missouri, and where they, when the farmers grow crops, they burn it off every spring. Mm -hmm. 
like if they're growing weed or corn or something, they burn it every spring. Possibly, I don't know. Well, it just looks weird because there's this like this perfect spot that isn't burned. I don't know. It almost looks like a, yeah, a well, photograph. Yeah, well, they do. Like if they're growing, and I'm not a farmer, but I do live in a rural area, and it's like whenever they grow corn, wheat, whatever, for it, it's it helps the soil. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's what they do that for. I mean, I'm just assuming it, it could be it, something it, else because well, yeah. I was looking at the map early. I mean, I don't even know if they grow wheat out there. That looked pretty desolate. I'm, yeah, I'm not even there. sure what they would burn. Yeah, I mean, it just seems like you know, it seems like it could be just sort of a a photographic error that was part of that because all these Possibly, are photographs and yeah. they stitched it in because there's this crazy spot that's so perfectly clear i don't know if you can see yeah this, and but. i yeah and i got to thinking too after i said that i thought well you know maybe if it was burned uh cropland it would be more you know there'd be more areas of it that were burnt but mm-hmm. anyway yeah that's kind of a strange thing i agree with you i think it's probably related to the family somehow i mean really who would be out there <laughs> it's the middle of nowhere yeah. I think I just proved it was like part of a photograph because if you look at the the edge on the right, it's just this perfect line with with sort of fuzzy on the edge, and then other spots mm, look okay. more. So I don't know. That just looks like a, a they're stitching parts together, like right here even. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know, and it keeps going down. It's kind of strange. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. It is. But, uh, Listen, this is totally off the subject, but whatever happened with uh, OU and, oh gosh, I can't think of her name. She was from Boston. You guys used to do a show together. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, Chasing Truth. <laughs> I don't know. She yeah. just started doing is something else. Is she still even on or what? Uh, I don't know. If she, uh, I don't know what she does. I think she just does like sits or talks and sits around and talks to people. Right. Well, you guys had a show together and I really enjoyed it, but you weren't. Yeah. you didn't do it very long. Yeah, well, I always wanted to. I kept saying, hey, we should do that show. Yeah, yeah, we should. And then we just never did it. Well, I liked it. And then I, I watched the whole time you guys were in Las Vegas. That was that was fun. Yeah, that was cool. When you guys went to the crime thing or whatever uh-huh. they they have every year. So mm-hmm. anyway, that's just my input. I On this case that you're covering, yeah, I think it's probably just my opinion. I just think it's family related to the children, to the custody and all that. Yep, that's what it's going to, I think it's going to be. Gonna be I mean, who's going to be out there? I mean, really, I mean, it's possible, I guess, but who's going to be standing on the corner waiting to, you know, mm-hmm. hijack, carjack him or whatever? It's kind of weird. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Maybe we'll do that show again yep. someday. I don't know. <laughs> I've, yeah. I've asked yeah. and talked about it, but it just sort of never seems to happen. Yeah, I really enjoyed it, and I, I can't even think of... Uh, what you guys call it? Something allegedly. Yeah, it used to be so mean allegedly, but now it's something. It was cut. We changed. Yeah, we actually so changed the name and everything, and had it. We changed the name, and we had a whole different thing, and then we just never did anything. Yeah. It's called like <laughs> Monsters Among Us or something. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, I really enjoy the way you, because uh, I'm I, I don't really have a lot of patience with people either. So yeah, I don't think you're mean. I just think you're you know get to the point and that's it. Bye. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, well listen, good talking to you. you I'll too. continue with the show. Bye. All right. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. I mean, I don't think this is a wildfire because how many wildfires burn like this? You see how perfect of a line that is? I think it's just like, look how everything's kind of weird over here and dark and it just didn't seem like it filmed good. But maybe this was a fire and this is a different piece of the map. That's how they do it. They stitch things together, right? So, like, like, look at that one. That's one month before everything looks the same. See, this doesn't change, right? And then I go to, well, not one month. I go to March, and then, then okay, now it looks normal. And I, I don't know. Who really gives a crap? It doesn't have anything to do with anything. It's not a shadow. Um, all right, so anyways, what do we got here? What do we got? A shadow. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, now, if it is in four corners, you can see that the, it's really right in the middle because this is where Wrangler lives, this is where Jillian lives, and then it's right there. It's almost exactly the same distance to each of them. So maybe they were supposed to meet here, but if that's true, 
How did they end up way over here, almost like you're headed towards Wrangler Rickman's house? I mean, you're right over there. That's weird too, isn't it? I don't know if the tires were flat. Yeah, okay. Well, if you, need, if you need me to send you some maps, I would send them over. Uh, I don't really, you know, spending time going over on the show, like techniques and however I do it, I don't know. And by the way, uh, they didn't move in the Sebastian Roger, uh, Rogers case. They didn't move. He's working over there. She went to go be with him on the job because she didn't want to stay at home with all the whack jobs, driving around the house, pounding on the door, you know, like some YouTubers were doing. Now, the rehab facility is over here. I actually went and found it. Uh, where the hell was that? Right here. So it's in, I guess, uh, what town, what city is it? Oklahoma City. And it was at the Salvation Army Rehab Facility. And I think it's right there. That's where the rehab facility is. And that's a different case right there, believe it or not. That's the Wicks family. So it's about... Uh, it's 250 miles away as a crow flies, so like probably 300 driving. Yeah, maybe a chart. But man, you guys, we just hit that massive lull again on here. We do that. We've been seem like we've been doing this every night lately. You know, I don't know what the deal is. It's pretty wild. But yeah, every every case needs a an org chart. Every case. Scare when people are surrounding your home. Dangerous too. All right. So anyways, we're gonna switch now out of this. Uh, the case of the two missing women, Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly. I don't really have much more to offer. It's just, it is what it is. They seem to confirm, however, that there's foul play involved here and they're victims, they worded them as. Still, what do you mean? What, what do you mean? Was there a question there? Pixie Blue, <laughs> you say still my best place to be? Was there some other place that had you questioning it? Come on. Jeez. <laughs> Still my best place. Hmm, I'm, I'm not sure how to take that. Let me think about that for a minute. Hmm, I have to think through it. All right, guess what we're going to start off with, though, you guys. We're gonna we're gonna watch an interview with. Um, Sebastian Rogers' stepdad and stepmom. All right, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go, everybody. Here they are. Look at. We want her in our arms. There you go. There you go. What's it been like? <laughs> it's actually Cleo Coming Smith's back from parents. the blowholes. You're back in your hometown now. What's so it look been at that. like? So here's the thing. Their kid, their her, uh, their kid got abducted from a park. Okay. Trying to carry on with your life without. Yeah. Like it, Are you huh? ready? Yeah. 
every one of you guys, the same people out there that are bitching at um, Sebastian Rogers' parents are the same people that thought these two people were guilty the whole time. Guess what we, on this channel, no. Okay? I know you're, you're adamant that you don't want to revisit all the, the sequence of events that night, so. See, look at that guy. How shady. Ooh, look. Look how he's, he's looking up. He, he seems like he's angry at the guy questioning him. You see how we can pretend all this shit when we watch this? We could sit here and pretend. These two people right here had nothing to do with a damn thing. Their kid was abducted out of their tent because it was a tent that was divided in the middle so the kids could be on one side and the parents were on the other side. In the middle of the night, some wacko way out in the middle of absolutely nowhere abducted the child and took it all the way, you know, like 100 miles away, 200 miles away, and they ended up finding the kid at some point. But when you watch this, don't they remind you almost exactly of them? Seriously, look, look at that. We'll just go to the, the part where you arrive at I remember this a the absolutely holes. perfect. You're pretty eager to get your tent set up, get dinner. Well, let's see, let's see. Let, let's do like a recap, like a quick little, let's see, Cleo Smith. Uh, Cleo missing Australia, there it is. I think that's it. Let me just turn it on. There it is. Yeah, I think it was right here in this little, right there in this this little campground here. They were camping way over on the eastern part of Australia. And then I think it was like back in this town over here in like Aina or so, something. I mean, it's just kind of my memory is looking at it. Let's see. Wait, uh, Oh, maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was right here. That's right. It was way closer than that. It was right here in this area, I think. Like on this street. So this guy drove up here all the way up these, this road, up to this absolutely crazy place up in the middle of nowhere and abducted her from here and then brought her back to this town. I'm just going by memory here, but I think it was just this area here, right there. And she was found in some house by, I think it was an Aboriginal um, Australian person had her. Okay, but now watch this and don't pretend that you wouldn't have thought the same thing as you did when you're watching the uh, Sebastian case, just because now you know the what I just told you. Get organized. Cleo then goes to bed. Oh, God. Oh. Eight, <laughs> 830. Did you see the blink? What do you say to her? What are, what are your last words? How do you put her to bed exactly? Oh, that's fake, everybody. I put her to bed. Look at her fake. I mean, I Jesus. Her I made sure her sleeping bag was complete. This is what it sounded like with all the crazy people out there. It's the same damn thing. Completely tucked under her mattress. I think they got $2 million for an interview that they did on a, on a station. I made sure she was warm. It was going to be a, quite a windy night. It was overcast. Um, we just tried to make sure she was safe. See that? See how he had that look on his face? People would go, oh, look at that. He doesn't care at all. He's just got this, this thought in his head about, like, what really happened? Last time you spoke to her, do you remember what you said? I asked her to get back into bed um, after she had a sip of water. Um, put my head through to check on Isla, and that was it. Mm -hmm. That was the last time. Now, notice how she looked over, confirming the story, almost like it was rehearsed, everybody. Now, you see what the... <laughs> And again, I, I know, I know you, you... See, I don't think it's weird at all. That's the thing. I don't think it's weird at all. This is how people are. See, everyone thinks that they would be better, okay? I guarantee you that if every one of you was in an interview, you'd be just as weird in the interview as these people are. Absolutely. Probably weirder, actually. Probably people night. would think you were a psycho. Um, so, about 1.30, she stirs, she's thirsty, and then at about 6 o'clock in the morning, 6, 6.30, you realize she's not there. 
Yeah, we're, we're freaks. How could we not be weird? Can you describe what that feels like? Heartbreaking. Heart-wrenching. Scary. <sighs> Completely scary. See, like his attitude, people were kept saying, oh, look, at, he doesn't seem like he's emotional. He probably did something in the middle of the night. I mean, look at that guy. He probably... Well, anyways, he didn't have anything. They have nothing to do with anything, all right? So I'm not even going to play the whole thing because it's just... It, it, it's the same thing. This, this, to me, reminds me exactly of watching Sebastian's parents, the same damn thing, and yet we're right back there again of be, them being accused over and over and over again. We don't know. There's no answers. Law enforcement seems to believe that um, they've been cooperating, and that's where we're at, all right? Gosh, Gray, can I just have an opinion? Sure, we're just not talking about it. But that's not cool, Gray. <laughs> oh, let's see. Hello? Hello? You're in Hello? the crazy. Yeah, who's this? Andrew. Uh, Andrew who? You, you cough like you had to make up the name. What is it? Uh, Andrew, what do you mean? I was just calling to see who you thought that, uh, <laughs> well, if it wasn't the parent. Well, I said, I said, I said, who is this? And you went, <clears throat> Andrew. So I wasn't sure if you were like legit or not. Yeah, that's, that's usually when I, that's what trolls sound like. So when you're saying, um, uh, who do I, who do I think uh, did what? I can, I can, who do, well, who do okay, I think I did what? Who sorry. did I think did what? what? What were you saying? Oh, um, <clears throat> so I was just thinking if I agree, I don't think it's the parents. Do you think that he, uh, Sebastian Roger may have walked off and I was just curious. What yeah, I mean, were. I think it's, uh, sort of looks like he just left the house in the late night, early morning hours at some point and walked away and wherever he went, he went. I mean, nobody knows at this point, but they are rechecking the immediate area and I was actually thinking that it was pretty good odds of finding him. Because it sounds like like he didn't, they don't have any footage of him leaving the area or anything like that. But I guarantee you, uh, they okay, so they got the parents' phones, right? So they've been able to track and do cell phone analysis. And they likely believe the story that they've told because everything matches up. They got home. Uh, looks sounds like, probably looks like she got home at 9. Uh, or et cetera. Are you there? What, what's going on in the background there? It's really loud. So it sounds like they made it home and everything, and you know they probably everything uh, added up. So now now they're doing an extra search around there because they haven't been able to see him on any other cameras. But everything that the parents have said have added up in the, in their story. That's why they're rechecking that original area. That's that's my opinion, anyways. Yeah, I think I agree with you. The, <clears throat> I saw the video that you, I don't know if it was today or yesterday, but um, their interview with Nancy Grace, they didn't hesitate. They were forthcoming, and it's mm -hmm. kind of annoying when people, I, I can't imagine what they're feeling like when people accuse them of stuff, but I don't know why you would go and do an interview if you knew that you had something right. to do with Especially it. Especially her. Like, would you really sit around going, I've got a good idea. Let's go on Nancy Grace's show. Somebody will just bombard us with every known question to mankind. She yeah. grilled him, didn't she? Oh, yeah. I thought she, you know, and overall, she did a pretty good job um, asking a lot of the stuff the public question. wanted to know. And I think, I think they actually sort of made her at the end kind of be questioning, because I think she went in believing they had something to do with it. And I think at the end, she didn't feel quite as strong at that point. What do you think? Yeah, I'm guessing they thought that uh, it, I mean, they want to find their child, and I'm guessing that they probably felt that by the end of the questioning that they were productive or felt they were productive and answering questions and putting information out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's, I mean, it's amazing, too, because it's, it's like, a, like Nancy Grace has a pretty huge audience. So, you know, yeah. um, 
what was weird about it to me was is it doesn't seem like going on there really helps a lot in terms of you know figuring out where he is it was like she they went on there literally almost as if it was a lie detector test like yeah they went on there to be grilled about every single thing and they answered him because those are their memories. They didn't have to like search around and try to, you know, keep a story, right? They just seemed like they knew what they were talking about. Yeah, and I, I did appreciate the question she asked, but it was almost kind of weird when some, well, some she asked the question. What's up? Oh, I was saying some of the questions were I didn't like at all. I thought they were out, outside the oh, lane yeah. of what they were doing. Yeah, and when I think she asked a question, and I think maybe the mom answered, and she said, no, him, no, him, no, him. And I was like, man, <laughs> let them talk. But she's asked good questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there was some stuff that was just kind of like, there was no really, what was the point of going into the CPS stuff? You see what I mean? Like, how does that act? see that's the question that is an implying it's really just so that the people out there get answers to questions implying they have something to do with it right i mean it was yeah, a valuable the, one but it's, the, yeah, yeah right it just seems like a little outside of like hey let's try to help find where sebastian is yeah like you're trying to get him to yeah, come come forth with something that would make him look like he hit, hit Sebastian, had to hide it. You know, who knows? Right. See, people people think it's relevant because they want to have answers, but there was no relevance to asking that question. It was really to try to, you know. Yeah. I mean, like you, she was almost trying to be an investigator, like she was a a, a detective <laughs> trying to like drill, get him on something. You know, and I understand. Yeah. I understand that, but if you're really going on a, in an interview to try to help find your kid, that wasn't a great place to go. But at the same time, it uh, you know it showed that they had nothing to hide. They went on there and answered everything. Right. I. I. Yeah. I. Uh, yeah. I think that after listening to your show with uh, hearing her questioning them and stuff, I thought that or I had way more of a thought that they were just wanting to find the, the kid and you know, they, mm -hmm. they did were open, they were an open book. So, yeah, that's what I thought. I thought, I think that's the one that listening to that. And then the press conference, that's kind of when I said, okay, I think it's time now yeah. where I can cover the case because before when it was just, everybody had to, if you were just, I don't really care about doing what everybody else is doing because I'm, I'm often on a different path than other people. But there was just almost right. no way you could get people to watch if you even hinted that the parents didn't do this, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I appreciate you not stooping to the level that some people do, man. So, yeah. And what, I know it's, it's probably frustrating as hell, but no, I appreciate you just. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's not, like, not there. it's funny. It's not like right when the, you called in, I'm, I'm every time a guy calls, I, I'm my spider senses go up a little bit. That's just kind of I think I have uh, I get jumpy because I always think there's a good chance of them being a troll, you know. But you you weren't one, okay? So yeah, there's there's too many people that just want to cause trouble. I I I don't get it, man. Uh. <laughs> it sucks. It sucks. So you know, unfortunately. Uh, it's just the way I am now. I'm too, uh, you know, I, I hear something I'm like, oh man, I don't know. Is that a troll? Cause you, you, you know, sorry for sounding like that when you called in, but Hey, it was, it was no. an interesting call after that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's all good. Great. I, I appreciate you. And I hope that you have a good night and hopefully the free support you and yeah, yeah, <laughs> we'll so. uh, keep going forward. <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot, Andrew. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks yeah. man. Bye. See ya. <laughs> Yeah, I think I totally agree with what he was saying there. The uh, I think it is kind of like PTSD, a <laughs> blank slate. I think it is a little bit like that. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. I, I, I mean, don't you? Didn't you guys give them some credit for going on to Nancy Grace? I sure did. 
Anyways, look at all these. Look at this. All these little ponds. So he lives right here. And look at all these. If you just go, if you just kind of squint your eyes for the blue over here, and I'm kind of using this creek as a border, uh, unless he crossed on a highway, I don't know if he would be going over there. You know, because even if he walked over here, he's still got to go through the creek. You'd have to go over a, a literal bridge at some point um, to get over it. Maybe over here, you know. So, uh, and I have this circle at five miles radius here. No, Eugenie, you're incorrect. But if you're calling me mean and throwing me in prison, I guess I have to go in there. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, that's what I think, Zozo. But I thought, like, um, she asked good follow-up questions, and she asked good questions, and it seemed like it was... Oh, and thank you for getting those five memberships up there, Eugenie. I think I saw those up there. And a blank slate for buying somebody one. Uh, I think I think you did that, right? Yeah. Up. Oh, <laughs> I just got tossed into prison. Will Gray Hughes make it out of prison tonight? Cindy J said so mean, following up Eugenie, and she said, and she gave me the jail symbols, and now I'm in. And so if the show stops right here, which very well could because of some of the lulls we have. Uh, it's going to be Cindy's fault because she is the one that tossed me into the slammer. But don't you, you guys think like a five mile radius is pretty good? I know he could walk a hundred miles in these, you know, when he's been missing, but I don't think he made it far. I think, uh, I think it's really interesting that he didn't show up on any other cameras. That's hard. Like he wasn't on cameras. Do a ton of people not have cameras in the area, perhaps? Well, Cindy J bought me a Snickers bar. Okay, that's not going to, it's not going to get me out of here. Whew. Oh, man. Well, give me a call when we get out. I'm, I'm doing a hard time. I can't even get phone calls. I can't even get phone calls, amazingly. Let's see, what is this she heard were kids at his... And by the way, I just got another anonymous call, so I have to block those now, too. Again, I usually turn them off because sometimes they're normal people. If you're an anonymous caller and you, and that was you, uh, type in the chat that that was you, and then I'll go, okay, I'll answer it, but... Uh, I'd have to turn it off again because right now they're blocked. Thanks, Cindy J. Yep, we're still not even, we're still just sitting in the cell at this point. Uh, we got to get back to the old days where bail was, you know, we get the bail, we get the hell out, and we're back to the show. Yeah, we're, we're nowhere near getting out of there. Huh? I'm not sure what that is, Zozo. All right, Oddball, is that, uh, what is that? Is that some sort of, uh, like, cake for the, you know, when I get thrown in jail, a blank slate, bail. <laughs> you know, that's how I get out of here. It helps, you know, support the channel and everything and gets me out of, out of here, and we just keep on moving. On Dancing with the Stars... I never saw her on that. All right, let's see, what is that? Is any of this bail here? That's oh, all bail, okay. You sent me coffee for my Snickers bar. Okay, see, that wasn't bail. How about you, Oddball, is that bail? All right, I guess we can get out of there now. 
even though that's just really pathetic. I'm going to walk all the way from the jail to the uh, hotel, etc. I don't know what that means, answering a question with a question. Thank you, Kylie. But you guys remember when, when you guys would throw me in jail before, how it was, you know, different. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are doing now, though. It's, it's not the same. There we go. So Half Rudder got some bail in there. I'm just so now hey now I can call the cab okay here we go a half rudder and then Eugenie I'm gonna call the wait ding dong I just had a ho ho today you guys those are good ho hos are pretty good if you put them in the freezer for a little bit I'm just thinking of how kids can be cruel and could have lured him out to hang out yeah huh it's not a bad idea there, Mimi. You're like, hey, come outside. And he, he gets up and he, you hear a loud sound. He's like doing something. Okay, it's okay, Mom. And then he goes out the window. And then somebody said earlier, it's true, right? How do you leave a footprint in mulch or bark dust? <laughs> you don't. That's the answer. There is no footprint in mulch and, and grass. And, you know, you're just moving around. That's not true, Gray. They've got this new technology where they... Okay, well, you, you go ahead and let me know what that one is, and we'll, we'll get back to it. Yeah, you don't leave footprints in there. Oh, there's some other guy said it. Ding-dongs or ho-ho? Uh, I like ding uh, ho-hos better than ding-dongs. <laughs> that sounds bad. <laughs> I like hoes better than ding-dongs. Okay. Even though some hoes are ding-dongs. Gosh, Gray, that's mean. Yeah, okay. It does It does sound kind of bad, doesn't it? Ding-dong is better than... Yeah, I mean, ding-dongs, I always liked them, too, because they were just sort of this little hockey puck-shaped thing that you could eat. <laughs> this is taking a turn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So I guess we let's just start right here. How about this? We go right here, and let's say he made it out. He goes out his. Um, well, apparently his window is in the front, right? But maybe he comes out and he walks. You know, at this point. He, he definitely probably gets out of this area, right? So then you have this construction site here that is probably just a, a landmine of things that bad that could happen, I would think. And there's ponds all over the place. You know, there's one there. Uh, there's a creek right there. There's even a pond in this facility right over there. Um, Tons of them. I mean, there's two more right there that I didn't even get from earlier. Let's see. Got to add those in. All over the place. And there's like a ridiculous amount. Like that. So they're just everything. There's a whole bunch of stuff surrounding the area that he's in. And if there was a car, don't you think that would have been on surveillance footage that night on a camera somewhere? If a car drove by and he got into it, it seems like that would be something that they were would be, would have been aware of. So it seems like their entire investigation has led them back to the beginning, meaning they don't even think. They think it's possible that he didn't even get out of this area somehow and he went into some place here where something tragic happened to him that wasn't seen easily the first time they checked it out. What do you mean, yes, car on camera? What, what do you mean, PJ? 
A an Uber driver said he saw a car. W what do you mean? Well, the Uber driver is a car. One, somebody said car on camera, and then the other one said a, an Uber driver said he saw a car. Oh, man. <sighs> yeah, we know that. Yeah, the glasses aren't his. We did that on the earlier show. Absolutely unrelated. And another thing we were talking about is, you know, he went missing in February, late February. How many people take the covering off their swimming pools at that time? And how many of them have them off now? You know, it's like we're still only in April. I mean, is it possible that he went into one of these yards and went underneath? Like, I would tell everybody in the area if they have covering on their pools, to take it off and look under it. And I don't know if people do cover them here. Let's see if we can find one in December. I mean, that looks like that's still not covered, so... I don't know. Does it stay always stay warm there? Like, all year round? Is this one of those? Uh, here, there's no way you could do that. And maybe maybe that is a covering. I don't know. It's hard to say. But anyways, I think that's what I would have people do: is everybody look, take look into the swimming pools. Every single person in the town. Look there. Then you can uh, mark that off. And this is December. <laughs> so is there ever a time when it's not? Yeah, that's October. In chat, know what I'm speaking about in regards to YouTuber posting Google Map. No, I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe we he's working and couldn't make it back for the photograph. Huh? I don't get it. Aren't there mine shafts around there? Don't know. Come on, freaks, call in. Let's get this back. Give me some of your thoughts on what to look at. And then there's just so much here, right? I mean, wooded area there, wooded area all along here. And then if you got into this area, holy crap, who knows? I mean, it's just it goes all the way out tons and tons of acreage out here where you could just probably and it's very hilly and really thick uh but does he it, it sounds like he wouldn't be a kid that would just go wander off into the middle of the woods well especially not here's a here's a an idea that i had earlier today when i was sitting around like, what if he went out late at night a lot? You know, like he would go out of his house a lot in the middle of the night and he would make it back prior to being woken up in the morning. And he just happened to make that noise this night. But what if he would often go out? They just didn't know it. Like, how often do you literally at two in the morning get up and check to see if your kid's sitting in their room? I bet very... Few do that when they're 14 years, you know, whatever, 13, 14, 15 years old, right? Like, nobody does that, right? So what if he was planning on doing this? Because some big people said that he was trained to, like, started to be trained for survival or something. So what if he was planning for this and had this uh, place out there? I don't know where he would, that where he stored, I mean, I, I know this sounds kind of nutty, but like he stored stuff for his eventual, you know, full-on get-the-hell-out-of-here move. Like he kept shoes and maybe a, an extra little bit of clothing, stuff like that somewhere, and then he walk, then he gets out the door, goes over, finds his little spot, and then he takes off. 
you know, because nobody knows how many times we've been coming out. I'm just throwing it out there. It's like low odds of that, but, you know. He doesn't like to walk. He, I guess he didn't move around too much without shoes on. So it's looking like he did leave without shoes. So wouldn't he have had a spare somewhere that people aren't aware of, perhaps? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They were only uh, 15 short of the goal, 65 short of me giving away five memberships, you guys. Just keep that in mind. Uh, to call, it said unavailable. Oh, are you are you are you are you calling anonymously a, a blank slate? Uh, it shouldn't say unavailable. You have to call on that one. Try it again. Try it again. Try again. There's the number. You might have called the wrong number. I don't know why it would say unavailable. And if it doesn't work, I'll shut it down and open it back up again and see if that works. Hello? 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 Is this Audrey? Hello? <laughs> Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I mean, a blank hey, slate. Hey, hey, hey. I mean, <laughs> hey, what's going on? Hello? Hello. Sorry, my YouTube turned back on. Sorry about that. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I just turn off the YouTube. Yeah, I don't know why it started back up. Weird. Um. Okay. So... Someone in the chat was saying something about how Nancy Grace had set up a um, um, polygraph for Chris, the stepdad, and he didn't show up for it. Um, and I was thinking maybe that's because him and his wife went out of town to oh, yeah. work. Right. But also, who the hell is Nancy Grace? I mean, he said, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. You do it. And then she sets up a polygraph test. I mean, what a joke. That's just for her to get more content. Him saying, yeah. yeah, I'll do it and everything. It's, What's he going to do? Drive all the way back from his work to go take it? Mm -hmm. And then she goes, oh, he didn't show up. What a, he lied. Oh, give me a break. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. I feel the same way. It's disgusting. And then um, the thing with the um, not showing up on video cameras uh, anywhere, it was, from what I remember, it's very dark in their neighborhood at night. There's not a lot of external street lighting in that neighborhood, and it might be pos might not be possible for um, people's cameras to uh, see, you know, people walking around like that. I mean, your ring camera can only see so much in the dark, uh, and, and, you know, if they have surveillance on the outside of their house, it may not be uh, good enough quality to see in the a neighborhood that doesn't have external lighting all over the place. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I did hear something about that, that the neighborhood was really dark. I think it was when that, um, when the um, supposed flashlight video came out that they were talking about how dark it is in the neighborhood at night. So that's kind of concerning. Uh, maybe why there was no um, video for us at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, it just doesn't seem like a lot of people have cameras on in that area. I mean, he would show up on something, on a motion detector, wouldn't you think? Yeah, I would think so, but I'm not positive that they either have the cameras or, um, you know, without they'd have to be pretty good quality cameras to um, see in the dark if there's not a lot of lighting. Um, and maybe they just don't have a, those houses are so nice. So you would think somebody would have something. I, and one of these things I can't uh, understand yeah. or is that they don't have a, didn't have a, um, oh, any kind of security system on the house. Uh, well, I mean, not everybody it's has weird that. To me. Yeah. 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 I understand that. It's just weird to me that nowadays a lot of people do and, Mm -hmm. I don't know if I had 
Yeah, but I think it's like nice thing. 50 50. Go know? ahead. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's like everybody yeah. has them. There's a lot of people that don't have them. I mean, I think it's like 50 yeah. 50. Yeah. I just thought in a newer newer neighborhood like that, because it seems like it might be kind of a newer area, but new build, new construction area, and like they're building in the neighborhood right by them, a new development, you know, newer homes would have them mm-hmm. from get, <laughs> from the jump, but obviously not. So, and I don't know anything about it because I haven't bought a, a house in a long time. So it seems like that. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm just trying to. That's the only well, thoughts that I really had was about the darkness. Well, what, what what was the main thought about the darkness? I think I, I think your your thing about the uh, polygraph test sort of took up my attention for in my mind during the darkness. Oh yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. I just um, maybe one of the reasons we don't have any video, uh, you know, there's no video, um, is because there's not anybody around there with enough uh, video camera quality to see in the dark and that neighborhood oh, yeah. seems to be pretty dark. Yeah, I mean, it looks dark and it uh, doesn't seem like there's a lot of lights in there, but people have lights, but if they don't turn them on, there's no permanently on light outside, it'd be really dark. And But I went up, mm-hmm. up the street and I don't see any obvious cameras they're usually pretty easy to see just on the side of the house so Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they have security but they don't have cameras you know some people have like an alarm you'll break the door and it goes you know makes the sound but you don't have any like brinks or something that's not brinks anymore but whatever the hell they're they're called avg or something or adt adt yeah so they don't really have I, i think they have the the cameras in one of their packages, but they usually just have where there were sensors on the doors and windows, and when you open them, uh, they would set off the alarm if you if you set it for your way, something like that. Yeah, probably so. And and most likely, people if they have like doorbell cameras or and that seems to be the way people are going anymore is to get those uh, ring or yeah. Or, I think those are great. Other brands. I, th- I think Ring is yeah, really amazing. I got. I mean, I, I think it's good just to do the full system that they've got, not the, just the cameras. Like literally, their Ring, home security. I mean, it's, a, it's pretty sweet, really. Yeah, I, I looked into that uh, a few few years ago when I was having some issues, but um, it, it was a good system. I mean, they had the whole deal. It's really cool. And what's really cool about it is you can talk to people when you're not even home, when they come to your door, um, and then, you know, you have control of it over the whole system from your phone, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot to set the alarm. I can do it to my phone. (laughs) It solves a lot of problems here. But, yeah, I'm really glad that... um, you're bringing some sanity uh, into the coverage on this case. And then also I wanted to just, if we can diverge a little bit from, from Sebastian, Um, I watched your, uh, what's the gal who got lost in the desert? What's her name? Oh yeah. Amanda Nenegar. Yeah. Yeah. That's so sad. And it's, or tragic actually is what that is. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I think it, I think she definitely would have lived had he wrote down the right mm-hmm. coordinates. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree. It was a very, very bad mistake. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I wish to see that. Here's what sucks the most, you guys, is that case is, and it was an interesting case. And it, why wasn't it a case that we all knew about way before, you know, like, when it was going on at the beginning, it wasn't until like three and a half weeks into it or so that finally it sort of made it into the realm of us being able to look at it. I mean, I even think I saw it like, looked at it like three days after I originally saw it. It just took a look at it. And then, you know, the family comes on, they let me listen to the 911 call and then boom, they had the right coordinates at the very beginning 
and they, they didn't find her. And then it seems, doesn't it seem a little suspicious too that right after we give them the right coordinates, like literally two days later, they find her sitting there? Yeah. I mean, you have this whole it month is. in something. I think, I actually think that the coordinates that we put in there sort of re-verified and put them right back where they were supposed to be. I even think it took too long after we did that, given the fact that it was just 0.2 miles from where the 911 call was made, where her body was found. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't very far at all. Very sad. Probably, I don't know. It's just so sad. Maybe they can get some, you know, some good will come out of it and they'll actually do some training. What makes me upset about that is he, or the person asked them to, asked her to get her coordinates, but then didn't, didn't take it down correctly so it could be used. So what's the point of getting somebody to share their coordinates with you if you don't know how to write it down correctly or use it correctly? You know, it's very disappointing. So, but hopefully, you know, they can use that for in the future to train better, do better Yeah. with that kind of thing. So... But hey, man, how you been? I'm excited to talk with you. I haven't talked with you for yeah, not too quite bad. a while. Not too bad. Yeah. Kind of. Uh, yeah, it seems like preparing myself. Well, to I go like to how you. Go ahead. No, nothing. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I like how you've been getting out there a little bit more, and you know, been on with Benny and some news stations, and that's yeah. really cool because it gives them, it, you know, it it shows the light on the good side of YouTube creators in the yeah. crime realm um, I instead think, of always yeah. focusing on the negative ones. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think we uh, my channel is one of the few that actually make a difference out there for multiple reasons. The other, there's a lot of people that just have channels just to sit around and bull crap with everybody and they just stare around and they do absolutely nothing, you know. I, I don't know what the, the deal is. It, it really sucks, you know. And what sucks the most about it is how many of them are filling up the uh, sort of the airways where it makes it hard for the people that are really doing it the right way, putting out the factual information, working through the cases, to get a footing even though you've been around a while. It's just mm -hmm. who's ever the most sensationalistic, you know staring at the camera yeah. like talking like they're just so cool it's just it's garbage man i don't know how to yeah. it makes it makes picking, it picking and picking apart families just picking apart any little yeah. detail they can get on a family and 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 running with it like it this is the reason why like you know there's several cases like brandy neal's case where they've gone after their family uh it's monkey yeah. monkey vaughn and then, um, you know, of course, I almost hate to say it, but Summer's case, um, where they just attack the parents at every turn. And, you know, none of these parents have been found guilty of anything. Yeah, I mean, my, I just had so, a theory in that one where, you know, the one that made the most sense was that, you know, something happened, like, tragically accidental, and then... They didn't want to get in trouble, so maybe you know. I mean, I, who know? I don't even. It's so long ago now. It's just so old. Yeah. You know, I, do, I didn't. Yeah, cover, I, I didn't I mean, keep covering it like everybody else for weeks and weeks and weeks mm -hmm. with nothing. There's still people, yeah, people there's still, still doing it. Still over covering and over. it. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, crazy. it's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, I mean, other than you know, um, there is this one little channel out there that all they do is show the Amber Alert, the information about the disappearance, and that's it. That's all they show. And um, she doesn't have any subs at all, so I always go and and make sure to to look at her videos. But um, you know, she has not very many people at all. But that's what she's doing, and I think that's you know that's really good. You know, to just to show those things. If you're not going to hurt hurt any, please don't hurt anything. At least if you're going to talk about it, just help mm -hmm. help. And your channel is one of the only channels that does. I mean, you have the DNA fund. You fund fund a lot of uh, donations to to uh, you know 
I don't even know the list is really long, yeah. you know, but you know, Nick Mick and, and, rain. and rain and all of the, the things that really can make a difference in helping uh, victims and yeah. uh, survivors and families lives. And you and, know what? The only way to make it happen is when the freaks help support the channel. But here we are with one of those That's massive right. lulls again, where we're just sitting here for uh -oh, don't lull. The, for Come on, 30 freak, minutes. Start away. <laughs> it's just wild. You know, it's like you, you tell them, hey, everybody, if you could help support the channel. And then 30 minutes later, there's still, it's zero. So it didn't used to be like that. So I don't know what the, the deal is. I have to work way too hard now. Like yesterday, I did four and a half hours of shows just to get there. Uh, the day before that, four hours. We didn't even make the goal. Um, it's just, you know, I don't know what, what would make it any different yeah. now than it, than it was. I mean, it's weird, too, because it's like when you have these big cases and everybody's into them, they support the channel more, and it's the same people. But when it's not like something really uh, big case, they just sort of go, yeah, yeah, forget it, you know. I don't know. It's weird. It's a really weird phenomenon. I don't know if that's what they say in their head. It's just they don't have the enthusiasm to do it, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's interesting. I don't know. Not interesting in a good way, but it is an interesting mm -hmm. phenomenon that seems to happen that people are more willing to, you know, do the donations uh, when it's mm -hmm. something that's really popular. Yeah, what um, sucks is so that's like, what sort of pigeonholes. That's why some people have to stay in. Uh, we never had to do that. Mm -hmm. Like we could just be doing anything, and it was always the same. But then, and then, and then it became where okay, now I've got to do sort of some of the bigger ones all the time. Like I, it's hard for me to do a cold case anymore because I know what it'll. I know what it'll be. I know what'll happen mm -hmm. on the show. So I got to look out for the the channel and all the stuff we do during, you know, the charities and stuff that I give money to as well. Because if I, if I just did cold cases for 30 days, we'd probably bring in a third of the revenue that I did this last month. Okay. A third. I mean, it would be just Dang. abysmal, right? So I wouldn't be able to give very much away. And, and that's including ad revenue as well as the super chats and all the other stuff. You know, there, mm -hmm. there's no ad revenue on cold cases that are random. Like, I bet you I'd get a 1,500 views at the most because people just don't care. I mean, not that they don't care about it. They just don't. They're not interested, which is <laughs> really yeah. weird and, and it's frustrating. It's really, it's, it is really weird because, even you know, whenever I'm bored and uh, I don't have any Grey Hughes investigates to watch, I'll go watch um, or listen to fbi what is it like old oh, like old unsolved mysteries or old and that and to me that's just as interesting as anything that's current and it's a shame it's a really shame that you know all of the yeah like i like one of, like that one that attention. i did i forgot the name uh, there's a couple of my videos on nefarious that channel that i made those are so mm -hmm. cool i mean they were so interesting you know the lady that was just in her house, I forgot the name of it, but it was like 1960 oh, yeah. something. She was in her house and the, and she went out to do uh, laundry with her kids. And then she goes back in and then she somebody goes into the house and like ties her up and kills her. Yes. And then the, then the kids came back and found and they ran over to the neighbors. And, you know, it's all right there. They, they actually yeah, saw the car stop, the guy walk in and they never arrested that person. I remember that one. Yeah, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, there's a lot of cases like that that are that are interesting and should should garner uh you know attention yeah. and it's, that dude's probably well i don't know how old he would be or whoever did that yeah. but you know he, he may still be out there be causing misery you know so it's yeah just, that was a weird one i should do a <laughs> what i should do is a live stream that, that i put all those videos in one and see how many views they get like like Put them all back yeah. together and then sit one after another, you know, do a little intro for each one. And then because I read them like I'm, uh, you know, narrating mm -hmm. it. You know, I wrote the did, did the scripts for him. And then there also that one. Uh, the lady that was the the deaf lady that worked at the bank. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. She worked at a bank and she goes on a break. 
Then her, then she goes to a gas station, and then there's this other. She's seen signing with somebody at the gas station, and then they find her car facing the wrong way on a street behind it, and then, like, and then they down the highway they start finding some of her credit cards and stuff leading, and they go to this lake. They go down to this lake, this um, I guess a bridge or something, and they find her shoes neatly placed on top of ice and then a little uh, not too long after that her body floats up to the surface that uh, been weighed down and apparently she had marks on her back as if uh, the person was forcing her to walk into the water with the weights remember that one <laughs> yeah i mean uh, it's, just, it's just crazy there's these wild stories out there that are really interesting um but you can hardly get anybody to watch them sadly yeah. So. Well, I think you do a really good job of balancing your channel. You you do you do. I mean, I understand you do have to cover uh, the cases that will bring the views in, mm -hmm. but you also, you know, you also balance it with um, lesser known cases that are current and and should be um, out there. Um, so. Uh, I think you do a great job of balancing your channel. And I know I was going to say something. I know you're putting in hours of work that we don't see uh, to get the cases ready and to get the videos ready. And like you said, writing a script or mapping everything out prior to coming on live. Cause I know you don't just always do it live. I mean, sometimes mm -hmm. you do, but um, yeah. I, 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 I don't think people realize how much, time you put into the channel outside of when you're live so it, yeah it, no, you have to sit around and look up stuff try to find things mm -hmm. um yeah sometimes it's kind of fun like I, sometimes i'll look and see and i'll find a spot and then i sort of recreate you know I, you guys see it i go wow now look at watch right here oh boom and it matches up with the photograph or something yeah i like that it yeah. like when it okay some of my favorite things that, that you do um, that aren't necessarily uh, just going over cases is whenever you're, well, the, like the other day when you were um, looking at the, the height of um, the killer, bridge Richard down. Allen, mm -hmm. on the bridge. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just thought I'd throw that out there. Allegedly. Mm -hmm. um, doing stuff like that when you're like, it's almost like you're showing us how to do it, but we wouldn't necessarily be able to do it. Um, but it's so interesting to me when you're doing the technical stuff, like when you're making a recreation or you're mapping mm -hmm. or you're graphing out on high stuff like that, showing us how the shadows work. To me, that's just interesting besides the case information. So it's, it's, a, it's a cool thing that you do. And, and to me, it's unique. I don't see a lot of other people or any other people out there doing it. There may be somebody, but I don't see them doing it. And no, uh, well, people that try that to imitate. They, there's a couple of people that try to like they watch what I do and they imitate it and do the exact same thing on their, yeah. their channel. But uh, you know, they they can't. They don't think for themselves. It's just sort of a oh wow, that's They're great. Imitated. I'll do I'll do a video on that too. <laughs> You know, but they, they rarely can think their way out of a shoebox. That's probably one of the biggest problems. <laughs> yeah. That's so. funny. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey. Well, it's always. Uh, well, I'm going to be going to. I might. I'm going to try to go to Delphi to do the for the trial, but I'm only going to go trial, if I yeah. can. You know, make sure I can get a seat. So I'm not going to go there for yeah. a long time and not have a seat. It might be worth it anyways, it, but you know. I could interview people. Yeah. But. Yeah, you know enough of the, the people there that um, you could actually garner the interviews and wouldn't just be, mm -hmm. um, you know, a wasted trip if you didn't get to see. I'm not sure how they'll do that if they're going to do like a lottery system or, or if you have to be in line or how they're going to do that. So I guess you should find out uh, before you make the trip for sure and see see what what system's going to be like you know what i mean yeah so. <laughs> yeah we'll see hopefully i can hopefully i can do it so are you going to drive again 
Mm, I don't think so. <laughs> it was such a long <laughs> drive. It's a long drive. <laughs> yeah, I think it's better to do it in one day. So, yeah. All right, yeah. well, I'm going to get back to whatever we're doing here, but thanks for calling All right, in. well, a blank no slate. problem. Good to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, it's always good talking to you. All right. All right. Have, have, a, have a good one. I'll be back in the chat. All right. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Audra. She's the one that does that really pretty music. Here, I'll, I'll play it right now just because she's sitting here. Raven. She used to be in a band called Ravens 3. Of all the money. This is her, you guys. Listen to this. That ever I had, I spent it in good company. And all the harm that ever I done, alas, it was to none but me. And all I done for want of wit, to memory now I can't recall. So fill to me the parting glass. Good night and joy be with you all. Of all the comrades that dare I had, they are sorry for my going away. And all the sweethearts that dare I have had, they would wish me one more day to stay. And if it falls into my lot, that I should rise and you should not, I will gently rise and I'll softly call. Good night and joy be with you all. Good night and joy be with you all. There you go. There you go. A blank slate. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, we're not even, we're not at the goal yet, you guys. But we're fifty one short of me giving away five memberships. So I feel like if everybody out there. Uh, helped a little bit out there tonight. We could easily get there, especially when you have 518 people watching, uh, 50 of which just left because they just want to talk about true crime every second of every second of every second instead of even having a moment where you're listening to a song. All right. And there, I have no PayPal's or any other source tonight, so we're really struggling again. Yeah. All right. And why? We don't know. We don't know. Nobody has the answer. So let's see. We go up in the... I mean, it's so hilly out here, you guys. I mean, you, you, it's like walking up a cliff on some of these spots. I wonder what it looks like right here. Yeah, you can go right to the edge here. And then it's just, look at this. This must have been when it was, this is 2007 right there. No, nah, no thanks, Cindy. Just not interested, all right? All right, Paulette Leonard got us to the, we made it just snuck over the goal. How about let's do a thing where we can, let's just look for surveillance cameras right down the street here. Let's see if there's anything at all that's obvious. Because I, I haven't seen anything. I mean, this is across the street, and I don't see, I mean, I don't know. Let me see what that, hold on, let me back up a little bit. Uh, I don't think that's a camera. So there's nothing on that one. Mm, nothing on that one. But there might be something on the side over here. 
That's those are lights right there. Don't know what that is. I don't think that's a camera though. It's on the downspout. Thank you, Richard Watts. 45 away now. 45. Is that? I'm not sure what that is right there. That looks like a light bulb. That doesn't look like a camera. Hey, thanks, Rhonda Brand. All right. I think we're only 30 away now. Not bad, not bad. Oh, and then thanks, Georgina Stoliker. What was the name of the game the boy played? Uh, I think Zozo was going to look that game up. I don't know. Well, they said the bedroom was in the front. You know what? Let's do a... Uh, maybe they have it on Zillow. About the house, right? Does anybody have the address handy? I can I can actually just do it by going like this. Google Maps. Yeah, why does it look so blurry like that? That's ridiculous. Uh, right there. Looks like it is. 1008 Stafford Court. Yep, Hendersonville. Oh, look at that. I think that actually might have the inside of it. That looks, let's make sure, let's make sure that looks right to me with the two windows here. Let's see. Yeah, two windows. There's steps over there. That looks right. There's a tree. Okay, so this is the right place. And let me go back to that again. Now look at it. It's all, it's all in there. There's the front door. You see that? Thank you, Leah Baker. Hey, who, who's above that one? And Rad Story, greatest of all time, she said. Look at that, you guys. Five away from five memberships out there. Now, there we go. Let's see. There is the kitchen. And she was probably on a couch. Uh, um, let's just see how this works. So maybe right here, you know, sitting, laying on a couch. And there's stairs there. I don't think he lived upstairs though, right? I think it might be over here. That looks like a sort of a living room or something. Nobody knows what you mean, Cindy. Type in full sentences. You're you're ridiculous sometimes. Yeah, he lives in the front of the house. I said that, Cindy. I don't, please don't throw your advice in here. It's not interesting. Okay, I, I know what I'm looking at. I know it's in the front of the house. I was just pointing at maybe that room over there. Uh, so this looks like the master bedroom here. And the bathroom. Wow, what a nice... Uh, <laughs> what, this looks like a freaking mansion here. I know he lives in the front of the house. I know he lives in the front of the house. He has a room. We even looked at it uh, the other day on the show. Maybe I accidentally said back. I don't know. But it was right there. Right? One of these windows. Because that's the front door there. And then there's like a living room here. Etc. No, she said he lived in the back. Yeah, that's a kind of cool little office up there. Hey, look at that. It's Scott Holland. I missed my wrench. Fellow mods and the freak family. Not to forget the goat of true crime. 
Investigation, final chemo. Next. Oh, I didn't even know you were having any issues there, buddy. My God. Uh, oh, no, your mom. Final chemo next week for my mom. Okay, good. It wasn't you. Uh, not good. To, <laughs> forget it. Lizard eye, everybody. Lizard eye. Uh, final chemo next week for my mom. Radiation over. Battled cancer since November. I'm still here. Just not much interaction. Love y'all. Well, good to see you. Yeah. <laughs> I was. Say, I mean, it sounds stupid to say good. It wasn't you. Uh, there's nothing really good about it. Look at that, 37 months for Scott Holland. His son's a good golfer, too. Man, I wish I had this for my office. Man, that, that'd be amazing. Jesus. Uh, yeah. In front of her stepdaughter's room was in the back. Right. He said, she said that Sebastian's room was in the front. All right, let me give it, let me get the five memberships myself. Here we go. Hold on. Just trying to open up the video. I'm telling you guys, if I don't make videos, there I hardly ever get subs on live streams. It's weird. Maybe it's because of my personality. <laughs> on my videos I'm more I'm just mellow talking. I don't like this guy. What a bastard. When it's time for spring, it's time to when it's time for spring, it's time to start oh never mind. This is a A family-oriented show. All right, here we go. And there are five memberships right now. Did it, go, did it make it through? Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, good. So welcome up there to, uh, let's see. Uh, Stacy Cole, C.R., Guilty of Crime, S. Blackman, Lorene Maines, and then Teresa Frost, Sav Match, Sean Pellegrino, I thought you were a member, Sean, Brittany, and Studio Headphones. There you go. Cool. Well, welcome, everybody. Welcome. Saved. All right, let's keep looking through this. Let me get my back to my ominous music. Thanks, freaks. So that's the back of the house. I thought he was like in one of these, but that looks like the garage. I'm not really sure how this all works here. It's kind of a, I guess we have to look at this again. So there's the front door. There's the tree that was out there. So that door, okay, well that makes that different. That means the, that window here is that one that we're looking at and then it goes around over here let me go back okay so you can see that that chair and this one so we're actually back from here we went back a little bit and then pan so this is the living room this is the dining room Now you can see in the living room here. This is the back, and then there's a like a probably a bathroom over there. This is near the bathroom, looking back out the back. 
And now the, the kitchen is back where, let's see. Right, okay, I think you can see the kitchen back here. So you're you're going backwards. Now you're in the dining room, but it seems like just behind here might be, God, that's crazy. How does that work? I think that's the kitchen right back, right there, yeah. Okay, so the next shot, the person's standing right over here. So this must be, that's a double window. Yeah, that's that window and that's that, that wall right here is uh, this one outside the window there. So that means the kitchen is over there. So where would his room be then? I don't know, it's weird. I don't really know where his win his room would be. Come on, Cindy, you got all the answers. Where is it? <laughs> I did great what a So here's the stairs that go upstairs. Um but we don't know only thing we saw upstairs was that office, I think. And there's the kitchen. And then, let's see. I wonder if that's a room right here that he, he's in. And I think, I mean, that one there could be like that one window right there. But what's weird is when you go around over here, it sort of seems like that would be the garage, right? Because there's a garage door and then wouldn't that, or is it, does the garage end right there? And, I don't know. Okay, there's, a, there's like a curved tree. There's a room right here. Okay, I think that's that room, maybe. <laughs> it's pretty tough to, uh, let me see if there's like a layout in here. $641,000 home. It's almost 3,400 feet. It's a pretty big house there. Three bedroom, four bathroom. I don't know, they don't seem to film, uh, show that bedroom that they're talking about. And normally bedrooms aren't in the front. I don't know. I don't know about that. Let's see. Left back corner would be... How do you know? Loper goat. How do you know the answer to that? Well, thanks, uh, Koozie Foo. <laughs> what, how come? What did I do? I mean, I'm not, I'm not complaining. I'm just wondering at what it was that made him one in the front. Normally, the master primary bedroom is down, others up. Right, so maybe he's in the back of the upstairs or something. I wish we had the actual plans of the house, then I could see it. Yeah, well, thanks for showing up, uh, Scott. I'm glad you're... How's your mom doing with the treatments? It's... Uh, I mean, I'm looking at it on Zillow here. It's one oh one zero zero eight 
Stafford Court. I'll put it in the. Uh, I'll put it in the chat here, right there. Heating, cooling, parking, a three-car garage, half-acre lot, built in 2005. Okay, it's got three bedrooms, four bathrooms. Full three, one and a half, main level three. So there's three bathrooms on the main level, or bedrooms, bedrooms on the main level. Dining room is 195 square feet. Bedroom one is 315 square feet. That's probably the master bedroom. Two is 210 square feet. Bedroom three is 210 square feet. There is a crawl space for the basement. That sold. They, I must say, paid six hundred forty-one thousand for it. Man, July listed for sale at seven hundred, then a price reduction to six seventy-five, and then it finally sold for six forty-one. I wish they gave like the layouts. That'd be cool. I know there's other sites that might have stuff like that, but you probably dumped the body in Memphis. Who? Who are you talking about? There's no he or anything. Who's the he, Nathan? No, he didn't, Nathan. He has nothing to do with it. Right. Uh, police don't think he has anything to do with it. So maybe maybe someday there'll be something that'll lead us to that, but we're not talking about that at this point because he, the, the police basically cleared them the other day when they said they've cooperated uh, fully from the beginning. They've done everything that we've asked, and we don't see, we have not seen any indication that they're involved with foul play re regarding it. Well, you, you, know, you don't know if he is, Nathan. Okay? I'm sorry that you think that, but we don't allow that on here. So go sell that shit to some other person. Okay? Thank you. I'm sorry that you got a free membership. All right. Uh, let's see. Yes, Diana Swap, there may have been some remodeling. Please don't state your opinion. Yeah, I mean, it's just ridiculous. Absolutely involved. Where do you come up with that crap? It's ridiculous. Uh, I'm not. I don't have anything. I I can't find anything that I think is suspicious about the dad. Okay, I don't. I don't see anything. Um, I know that sounds weird, but what's suspicious about him? Nothing. Now, if you want to, if you, maybe you're believing other YouTubers and all kinds of crap about his. Well, he's got a child protector. You know, like, <laughs> give me a break, you guys. This is. I haven't seen anything. He's answered all the questions. Everything, every interview that I've seen him and his wife in, they've answered all the questions. Right? Now, I'm not saying that there isn't a possibility that one of them could be involved in something. However, the police don't seem to think so. That's why they're looking in the same area again. Because they're dumbfounded. They're like, wow, he just disappeared but he doesn't show up on certain cameras, so he's got to be, it seems like he's in this area. What are you talking about, Renee? I don't get it. Real, what, really? He was? Ooh, what? What are you talking about? No, I mean, there was child protective, like the CPS complaints twice or something with his ex-wife. 
you know, it's like, what does that even mean? I'm not sure what you're talking about, Renee. It, it, Got to type in the full sentence. Is there a video walkthrough of the house? I didn't see one. He's about as cleared as you can get, Mama Three Boys. Okay, sorry that for all of your confusion. They haven't, they haven't lied in any of them, Midnight Spirit. Yeah, there's been no lying whatsoever. I know that you want to believe that. It helps your theory, but uh, they didn't lie in any of them. If you spanked a kid for the first time and that mother allowed it, how does that... Neither know why. I don't know what that means either. Sorry. Yeah, you, you guys are going to go on the lie detector test? <laughs> he didn't take the lie detector. He, he, he was told by the police he doesn't need to take the lie detector test because they could verify his alibi. So they just said, there's no reason for you to take it. You weren't here. Okay? Then Nancy Grace said, he's, she said, if I arrange for one for you, will you take it? Absolutely. And I don't know what the circumstances were, but she probably set something up and he couldn't make it to it. Is he supposed to drop everything because he told Nancy Grace? And then Nancy Grace just did it so she could have more content and bring on an expert about polygraphs and... Oh, look, he showed deception on this part, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What a joke, okay? She was fine in those interviews, but that, that's getting way too... That's ridiculous right there, all right? So where, where were the lies that the parents told? Go ahead. I want to hear those. I'm waiting for the lies. I'm still waiting for those. Oh, I see Midnight Spirit. Uh, you sound like a... Let me see. Midnight Spirit. What does that sound like? At a hut. Get it, little body. Step up. Step up. Oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, you heard it right at the end. It said bat shit. Yeah. You haven't done your research then. <laughs> oh, God. They don't change, Midnight Spirit. I've listened to them all. There's just slight little variances that you guys turn into big deals. Like one of them was, oh, my God. Did you hear that? She said he heard, she heard a noise in his room. Now she's saying a thud. Oh, that's a travesty. Idiots. Jesus. Um. Redfin has a video tour. Send me the link then, David. Send me a link. Never heard of it. I guess I could try putting it in there. Ah. You didn't do your research then, Gray. <laughs> Did you hear what the, the ex-wife said, you bastard? Right. Let me ask you something. Uh, will you guys all apologize? All of you, if it turns out that he has nothing to do with it. And I, I won't apologize if somehow later on they find some clue that indicates that it might be them. Because there's nothing right now. That's why they're searching this area again. Doesn't that tell you that? Why would they be searching all around in that original area again? I don't see Jessica's question. It disappeared. I'm 
trying to find my there it is okay where's the video on here uh, right there okay here we go let's see by the way I used to do these videos <laughs> I used to do these for people a long time ago. All right, let's see, let's see. Okay, go into the house. Okay, right back. That's the back of the house. That's the front of the house. Dining room to the left. There's the dining room. Backing out of the dining room. Going into the living room. And that's out to the back to the left there. I think that room might be straight ahead through that, right to the right after going, I don't know, it's hard to say. Man, what a, what a pretty nice house though, wouldn't you say? Master bedroom. What about the front window, the right facing the house? Yeah, on the right hand side. Well, I think that's kind of where it was leading out by the stairs there. So this is probably the kids' bathroom there. And maybe that was the room. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe this room here. That's not, I don't think that's the master bedroom, right? Because the master bedroom was this one. Okay, look at the bed. I think it's a different one, right? Let's see. I just want to look at the bed shape there. Yeah, it's different. So, like, that's not a master bedroom either. That's still the master bedroom there, I think. Yeah, because it has the same... But this room, I think, is... That's one of the rooms, um, just the regular rooms here. And yeah, and this one's another one, I think. So there's three different bedrooms. And that window is... That one had three slats on the window. I can't it's, I can't see through there. And then it goes up those stairs and then this is the whole upstairs I think. So all those bedrooms and everything everything's downstairs other than this massive loft up there. Right? I mean that's kind of what it looks like. I mean, they pr pretty much show you everything. You go up the stairs, and there it is, right there. So that area, I think, uh, this bedroom here, and so this one and this one are both downstairs. And then this is the master bedroom. So the three rooms that they're in are downstairs. It's just hard to, like, this has two narrow windows on it. I don't think there's any bedrooms upstairs in this house. <sighs> Jesus. Yeah, brutal. Gray, you didn't do your research. If you did, you'd think they're guilty too. I, I don't. I'm sorry. Now, if they turn out to be great, the case will get solved. I just don't see it. See, what's weird is you would think that maybe like that was one of the rooms there, but ex except when you go around the corner here and you look over, there's a garage doors there. So obviously there's a garage that we haven't 
yeah, they didn't go in. And then over here, there is a one, there's a front door and then one window on that corner there. See? Right there. And so that one has two. These almost feel like they're in the back of the house, some of these. Now this one could be in the front. See, it has one, two, three. Looks like a square window. And that one very well could be in the front part of the house. Like if you were looking at like that window, except it doesn't look the same. You know, there's just one thing down the middle there. Now maybe it's different inside the house and it doesn't even look square either. So I don't know. I don't know. That, 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 well, maybe maybe that could be it. Like that could be this window, and it's just these are inside, like they're the gate. You know those little uh, blinds that you can open and shut. So let's just assume this is. I think this is his room right here. I think this is Sebastian's room right here in this this image. That's what I just said, Dana. I think this room right here is Sebastian's room. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, there you go. So if that was his room. I don't really see him how he's getting out that window. Maybe they'd take another video in here or something. They didn't flee anywhere, powder packs. <laughs> you guys are crazy people. Look at. The husband is always out of town working. You get that, right, clowns? He's always out of town working. And so she didn't want to be sitting at home with a bunch of whack jobs like powder packs and all the other people who, you know, show up at the doorsteps and chant wildly that they're the, these are the killers, everybody, they're the killers. And so he, she probably just wanted to be with her husband somewhere. I mean, using the word like flee is ridiculous, okay? Yeah, whatever. You're, you're just uh, got a bunch of lunatics. I think a lot of people would take off in a situation like this. It's not like he's he's been gone for so long, he's not just going to show up back at the house. And if you weren't there, he'd go somewhere else. I mean, come on, this is stupid. Right, he could have gone out however he wanted to go out. He could have gone out this door right here, you guys. Look at, uh, right through here, that's the uh, living room back here. And then just off to the left back there is his room. He could have came out this door right here, quietly opened it up, and uh, I almost think it's like Google Earth here, and walked away. I mean, everybody acts like it's, you know, he's got to go out his window or something. So now, if we look at it like this, let's put a pin here and we'll say that this is Sebastian's room. Now we have that. There's Sebastian's room. He would go out the door. So there's a hallway right here, and there's a door, again, because the stairs are right, right around in this area that go up to this lar large sort of, um, I don't know what you call it up there, like an office or something, loft. And so the room is right back here. So he's in this room and then he maybe he came out and maybe the mom, the, the, I bet you the, um, master bedroom might be back like over here or, or maybe somewhere over here. It's hard to say because the, I know the kitchen, uh, let's see, let me, let, let's look at that again. But that was the front door, the living room. There's the front door. Yeah, that was the front door right there. That the okay. Let's just look at it like this. Or around this corner right there, or right there. I can't tell. That might be the bathroom there, and then the room is down this hall to the right. Um, I don't know. I see. Now it looks like it's just a. Uh, there's probably a bathroom or something right there. If you go back to the other shot, I see something right here. I don't know what that is. I mean, you don't see it here, so.
and her room might be actually I think I might have seen where their room was hold on looks like it's back in the back left I'm just looking up the video here hold on a second right back here I wonder if that's where the master bedroom is because the garage no that's kind of where the garage is too because that's the front door right no, the front door is behind us. God, now I'm totally backwards again. Jeez, what the hell happened there? That's the front door. And then the dining room's right here. This is the living room. And you go out of the house back here. This is a whole different part of the... Those are stairs going up. His bedroom's over here to the left on this video here. So it's not back in there on that one. His bedroom's over here to the left. Yeah, it's hard. It's so many. It's hard when they're just skipping around like this. That was this. This is the master bedroom, master bath. That might go out to the garage right here. Maybe. I doubt it. That's the master bedroom. Probably. Probably just the bedroom door. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think that maybe goes out to a garage right there? Oh, there, I think, okay, so that is right there. That's the master bedroom right here. It's in the back uh, right, so he's in front of them. So I think that's the master bedroom, because if we go back to the uh, this shot over here, hold on, in the master bedroom. Is it this one? No. Let's see here. See how there's two narrow, thin windows there? And I'm pretty sure that when we go back to the outside shot, that that's these two right over here. Okay, so that means up in the air on Google Earth that the master bedroom is back here. This is the master, this is where uh, master bedroom is. So that would be where the parents. Right there. And so, yeah, I mean, if she was in the living room. That's the front door. Sebastian's room is around this corner here. The stairway, I think, that goes upstairs is over behind us. I mean, I, it's hard. It could be around this corner, but I don't think so. That's why it looked bizarre. Uh, I think the master bedroom is to the left here. The Sebastian's room is to the right. There's the front door. And then, but what's weird, yeah, so yeah, okay, yeah, that's what threw me off last time. Those aren't the same things let me show you that's exactly what threw me off so ah shit let me go back to here they keep switching before i want to so this is just coming into the house this is good so this might be a closet here or another way to get to one of the rooms but if you go around this corner there's a bedroom back over here and then a master bedroom in the back right corner because this is the front door and you're entering the home here now you're looking back at the door you just came through. This is probably a closet right here. Makes sense, right? Like near the door. And now, uh, let's see, this is the dining room. That's the same door that we were just talking about. That The front door is right around to the right there. Okay, now, let's see. Uh, this is the living room that's further back. Okay, so here is the dining room. There's the front door. Right there, you can see the very edge of the closet right there. 
then around the hallway here is Sebastian's room, and around to the left here is the master bedroom. Does that make sense to everybody? I think I got it right now. What do you guys think? And say no to lulz, everybody. Say no to lulz. We're still on the show. We're still going. And see, there's a time where it switches around. So again, this is the front door. There's the edge of the, let's just say a, a coat closet. And then around the corner here is Sebastian's room. And around this way is the master bedroom. All right, so let's keep going. Okay, now this is where it threw me off before. Right? My eye thought that that was that same opening where Sebastian was around, but it's not. There's the front door. To the left over there is Sebastian's room. So over here and then behind us right now is the master bedroom. This is the stairs that go upstairs to the bonus room or whatever you want to call it. Hey, look at that. Timothy Cecil with the no lull zone. Wait, hold on, let me do it. Okay. The no lull zone. <clears throat> no lull zone. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I made myself sneeze. That's crazy. Yeah, what, what do you need, Zosa? What do you need? You just, like, tag me for no reason at all. Thank you. I don't know what that means, Zosa. I'm just telling you right here. Look. So back around, this right here goes upstairs. And then uh, I think this might be where the garage is over here. But that's the front door right there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, we, we, got, we already got it figured out. So all that really matters now is... The you know, only thing that matters to me is where Sebastian's room is and where the master bedroom is. And the living room is right in this area. So yeah, when she was on the couch, she heard some noise over here. And then eventually she went to bed at midnight and he's she's assuming he's asleep. But after that, he could have easily come down and went out the back door. You know, just snuck... The dog's not going to be barking at him. He lives there. Now, we already went over all the square footage and everything. So, so. We already did all that. You must have been gone at the time. Yeah, we did that already. I went through the whole thing. Don't you remember? And the master bedroom was 200 and bigger than that. Maybe 300 square feet. Yes, I tried to get his attention, but I already already did it. We already went through all that. <laughs> what are you guys talking about? <laughs> Jesus. It's on Zillow. You scroll down, it's at the bottom. It went through detail after detail of each room, how big they were. Mm-hmm. So you got a 15-year-old uh, sneak out? Well, thanks, Timothy. I guess you were the only one that said no uh, say no to lulz she was on the couch makes sense yeah yeah exactly now i want to look at this like he left see there's people that can't get off their tunnel vision that the family that the stepdad and the mother are involved somehow uh, I don't know if you can figure out what room it is by the size. If I had the layout of the house, I could do it. But we already figured out where the rooms were. This is the uh, this is the master bedroom right here, and uh, you can see it in the video at the end. Watch, see these two windows right there. So if you go to the end and you go outside, it's right there, and this is the back of the house. The garage is there. And Sebastian's room is over on the in the front of the house with the one square window. Oh, she did? Oh, well. <laughs> okay. Hey, that's cool. I was wondering, Timothy. I was like, wow, Timothy, that's a, you know, that's a little larger than normal. But if you were trying to help me out by getting a matching, that's pretty sweet. 
And, you know, sweet like cool, but also sweet like thanks, Timothy. <laughs> uh, her room might be, I mean, who knows where her room is? I'm sure there, they showed three rooms, though. Let me show you. Let's, well, let's take a look. Let's see if we can fi figure that out. So this is the master bedroom. Right after this, they start showing uh, another bedroom. That's, that's the master bathroom. And right here, I think this would be her room. So let's go back. Um, well, that's, I mean, that's sort of interesting too, right? Because that has sort of similar window. But look how wide that window looks. They, they look wider than... So I guess we we can say that it's possible that that back left is um, no, but she said that their room is in the back of the house. That makes sense. But let's just look at this. There's two windows here, okay, and look at the bed in the house. It has a square top on it, and then we're gonna go to this one. That's a different room, right? So that's a square window. So remember that square window, and we also know that the other small bedroom has two windows and all and look at the uh, headboard there and then we go back to the master bedroom and this one also has two windows on it okay so now we got to determine uh, which one uh, those are but I, I have a feeling that both those bedrooms are in the back of the house and then only uh, Sebastian's is in the front That's just my thought. Okay, right here. That's a bedroom, I bet. And that's a bedroom. So this might be the master here. Because this looks smaller. I, I know it's smaller, so it could be an optical illusion. But this just looks way bigger. This one right here. So how about this? Do you think this right here is the master bedroom? Okay, so that's master bedroom. And what did you say the, the other uh, sibling's name is back there? Because that looks way wider apart, and I think that makes more sense. Let's go back to that one. See, those are closer. And then if we go back to this one, see, they're way further apart. So I think we just got that one. And what was her name? Faith. Okay, so let's let's fix this. Move this here. Master bedroom. And then... Uh, thanks for uh, getting that. And then Faith. Have me look at it again anyways. And then Faith over here. And then let's go back into the house. Is there anybody else doing this kind of stuff on any of the other channels? Am I trying to, you know, or is it just they did, the parents did it, so we're, you know, we're not doing anything? <laughs> it's just, I mean, this is like 101. I figured there was like a million people that have already done the Zillow and. And this kind of stuff doesn't get you 3,000 people watching. Only if you sit there and go, oh, you know who did it? Those bastards, a guy with a... Hey, thanks, Zozo. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Timothy. But at least Zozo goes with does uh, her bets. She thinks I owe her, though, when... <laughs> because she said it's going to be a guy in the Delphi case, a guy in, their, in the basement... And her grandmother's house in the basement drooling. And then because Richard Allen was told to act crazy and he drooled on his shirt in prison. Man, that's a, that is not even close. That's uh, <laughs> Hey, thanks, Rad Story. All right, let's, now, now let's go back into the house here and see if, uh, where the living room is. Just kind of, like, we'll put a pin there, too. All right, so let's let's look at the picture when when you're coming into the house. I think that'll be a better way to figure this out. All right, look at that. 
So this is a sunroom here, it looks like. And yes, this goes back to the master bedroom back here. That's probably one of the walls of the master bedroom. So there you go, we got that one. So she was laying like on a couch right here. Absolutely makes complete sense that she could hear something. Uh, so let's go take a look at it from the, uh, let's, well, first we have to go look at the video here just to kind of get a reference because it's near the, at the back, at the very end here. So there's the sunroom. It's more on the left side of the house and the living room's right through there. So I would say the, the couch is about right in like this area right here couch All right and then there's just this little hall and then boom his bed so easily from the couch she could go hey what's going on in there Does that makes sense all right freaks see this boom we got something productive done we now know where Sebastian's room was. We know where the couch was. We know where, uh, you know what I should do is make a video on just this part. Although you'll see it on uh, this other channel before we wake up in the morning. Because they always watch what I do and then the next day they already get it out. And so we could, we could go over this and then use the Nancy Grace audio of the story she told and see if it makes sense to people that it entails searching everything in that area. Yeah, they should. I think it's possible that he just went into the, a crazy thing. Sometimes the hardest cases to solve, like again, Harley Dilly is like the perfect example of one of the, and I bet you Summer Wells is something similar. I think it's very possible that Summer Wells just wandered off it's also possible that she died on the property and, and one of the parents took her somewhere to hide it because they didn't want to get in trouble because of how she accidentally died or something. But the uh, she could have just wandered off and it's just so hilly. It looks very similar to, to the wooded area around here. Uh, why, why do you think he did something to himself? Do autistic people take their own lives very often? I don't know, this doesn't sound... I don't know, I don't, I don't feel like he did something to himself. You think he met up with somebody? I think he, you know, if we look at that video back here again, um, I mean, look at that. You just go out through the sunroom, come out the back, and you're out of there. Right there, look at that. Look at, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at. So here's the sunroom, and that's the living room right inside there. And there's a fence. Just hop right on over that. By the way, have you ever seen an ugly realtor? just saying uh, <laughs> yeah it just doesn't work you know what I mean hey everybody I know I look like an absolute slob but would you buy this house from me please <laughs> uh, the answer is an absolute no thank you very much <clears throat> Yep, there you go. There's the front door. This is on the left. The stairs that go up over to the over here are, are the uh, Sebastian's room, Faith's room, and then back right behind where I'm this camera is right here is where the master bedroom is. It's actually around. I think yeah. There's a like an opening where this is 
film from. And is that the, what is that? Is that the, that's not the mudroom, or the sunroom, it's something else. Wow, that's crazy. So this is another sort of like, uh, like that's the mudroom or sunroom, whatever you want to call it. And this is just another kind of, like a, what do you call that? <laughs> I don't even know. Oh, thanks, uh, Michelle and Sweet Briar on uh, PayPal. Thank you. So through PayPal and just making sure you received it. Um, yep, I got it. Oh, I won't say the name on it, but I did get it. I'll, I'll reply. Okay, do right, you guys have any hope or that they might find something in this renewed search? Because I kind of do. It feels like this is sort of what I'm just have been thinking is that there's something like somewhere in this area, he didn't make it far and got trapped somewhere. You know, in, I would say inside of this five mile radius, which is huge. <laughs> I mean, but I would actually, in reality, would make it, I just use that as a random sample. But I would say more likely, like right in, in like there, like maybe even like that, right there. Somewhere inside of that. Yeah, I hope so too. I, even if he's not alive, I hope they find him soon. Because you, you just don't want it to keep going forever and ever and ever, not knowing ever what happened. Well, they said that they didn't have better info for the search, that they were just rechecking a place. Because I think when they originally do it, they just walked around, maybe even called his name, you know, uh, didn't do a deep dive type search, you know, you know what I mean? Like looking into every little crevice and everything because they expected him to still be alive moving around at that point. Uh, you know, maybe just trying to find him. Uh, now they're kind of wondering if maybe something happened to him in that same area. Now you've got to look into Exactly, checking holes, like Laura said, uh, various places like that. And that, and another thing too, like JJ's saying, it's you know, it's possible because we had a case one time that we covered. It was a, a cold case because they've never. Uh, I guess I don't know if there was ever an arrest made in it, but uh, there was a guy and a girl got in a fight, and you know they got in a big uh, fight. Uh, coming home from a bar and she gets out of his car and then she goes missing and who's the suspect in that one you guys who would you immediately suspect when uh, suspect <laughs> the, they got in a fight and you know he claims she got out of the car and she goes missing f uh, forever basically right right you would think it was a boyfriend but it turns out that she was walking down this uh, the street and a serial killer picked her up after she got out of the car right that's what actually happened in the case so uh, one thing you guys women out there do not run do not get out of the car and go I'm I'm gonna walk you know how these guys have all done pull over I'm gonna get out right don't do that shit yeah you remember that one Daryl wasn't that one crazy yeah yeah, so an actual serial killer got her, and uh, let's see, mom did say he liked to play hide-and-seek. He would be very vulnerable. Yeah, so what if he did something like that in the night, and, you know, it was like hiding, but it was a place that it was too hard to get out. Like, he got in, but he couldn't get out, and it was a really just a crazy place. 
I don't know. I'm just trying to think of this case without involving the parents. That everybody seems like if you don't, you just don't know what you're talking about. I think what happens is, is you get people that are very good at selling you that the parents are involved. And it's much like uh, when they talk to you about EV, you know, like the uh, spirit boxes and they tell you what you hear and you go, oh, I do hear that. So they'll say the same thing. It's just the art of suggestion. So you're out there and you're going, oh, wow. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, God. Oh, again. Ooh, oh, they're totally. Dead. And then every time you hear it now, you confirm your bias with every spoken word that they say. Not nothing they say. I mean, I've seen people analyze every sentence they say and there's something wrong with it. Yeah, let me out of the car. I want to walk. Mm. I'm not sure uh, what he is. It sounds like he's... I mean, if he's well, somebody that would respond to certain music and stuff, it seems like he's kind of a... I don't know. He must be pretty high-functioning. I mean, he goes to school and everything. And search areas one mile away. Well, they... they they search right at his house. They have a, a center, the, what do you call it? The command center. They put right uh, right here. So they're obviously searching right in the area of his house. For the pool, uh, what would I, I don't even remember what I asked. That was an hour ago. Was the key found where the attack happened? Yes. Okay, so you think that they got attacked right there. That's where the ambush was. That was in the other case prior. The two women missing in, um, I think it was Oak, Tennessee. Was it Tennessee or Oklahoma? Uh, hell, I can't remember now. Oklahoma. Right. Yep, right over here. kind of weird to have Riley Strain right here and here's Sebastian. Yeah. I don't know, but you know what? You guys put too much faith in dogs. You know, dogs are pretty good, but they don't always get a scent on anything. People are way too into the dog scenting angle of the case. Um, I want to know how much of the, f <laughs> I mean, if you ever listen to, uh, uh, <laughs> let's see, Tim Miller of EquiSearch, he is not a fan of dogs at all. Like he says, you know, when they found, remember that case, uh, like a year and a half ago where that female soldier, uh, they found her body finally after, you know, somebody killed her and put her next to like a bridge. He said that the the scent dogs walked right over her uh, twice. Didn't 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 uh, sense anything. Yeah, Vanessa. And then uh, then he he goes, why don't we lift up this? There's a big thing here, and they lift it up, and there she is. The dogs didn't uh, scent on her whatsoever. Okay, so let's just you know, they're pretty good. They're better than nothing. The Sebastian was high functioning and there's two sides of the story, but there are documents issues on both sides of abuse. We do not know if, but even if it's true, it doesn't have to mean something. Because he wasn't in town, right? All right. And right, so if he ran away, that the abuse part is good evidence of perhaps him running away. I give you that, that he just was, he told his dad that he, he wished he was with him, and maybe there was a time he just, you know, got upset about something, he just took off that night. And maybe he'd been planning it for a while, too, you know, maybe he had an extra pair of shoes somewhere, 
But wouldn't you think if he was out and about trying to get somewhere that somebody would have seen him by now? Just somebody out there? Yeah. Anyways, you guys, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do four hours again tonight, okay? So <laughs> I appreciate you all being here tonight and helping support the channel and hitting the like button. We did get 543 likes. You know, not incredibly awesome, but not bad either. Um, but, but what we're doing is we're taking a look at this case without uh, blaming the parents because law enforcement currently, obviously, can't find anything that connects them to the case and have said that they've been very cooperative and have done everything that they've asked. Doesn't that seem reasonable, you guys? And when I say obviously, it's because... That's why they're researching this entire area again, because they know he, he was there and he went missing in that area, and they don't know where he is either. Okay, so that's what we're doing here. Now, it could turn out later in the future that uh, you know, there might be new evidence that comes out, and boom, they nail it on one of the parents, but there's nothing to suggest it currently. None of the things that you want to talk about, oh, they changed their story, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's just, it's not, it's not working. Yeah, they've, they've gone out of their way to be on as many shows as possible. Even Nancy Grace, for God's sakes. All right. A uh, prosecutor, you know, that was just slamming them with every question under the sun. And now everybody's bl bitching because he didn't show up to take a polygraph test that Nancy Grace set up. Don't you guys find that absurd that you're even giving a damn about that? <laughs> Jesus. That's a, a taking a polygraph is almost a no-win situation. Cuz it depends on the guy doing it. Well, he seemed a bit deceptive when he said the kind of like uh the, the guys that read body language. Yeah, I think it I think it's a little I think it's very strange. I agree, Pixie Blue. I mean, to actually, I, I, you know what? It should have stopped when she said, if I set up a polygraph, would you take it? I absolutely uh, will. You know, I'll, I'll do it. I'll clear my schedule, whatever the hell he said. Yeah, he goes, I'll, uh, you get set one up, I'll be there. Right? And that's where you just kind of leave it. You don't literally go do the polygraph, and then all of a sudden they're out of town working, and then they don't show up, and then you go, ah, he didn't show up for the polygraph. Well, did you send it out for him to do it at his lunch hour, or? Yeah, I, I, I would say to everybody out there, never take a polygraph test. And, and in fact, if you're bringing it, being brought in, and they start asking you any questions, like if you're literally trying to help, and you, you're helping the police, and they bring you in, they start asking questions, the very first question that implies you being involved in something Immediately do not answer another question and ask for an attorney. Okay, because they can start, uh, you see it all the time. I mean, uh, we got a YouTuber out there that used to do those kind of interrogations where they would like basically almost put the words into their mouths. Yeah. Right. I mean, we all wish that people could just talk like that, but people will get uh, wrongfully convicted sometimes because they just dared to speak and try to help. Okay, so thank you to Rhonda Lanham, who started the day off with a double cat eye right out of the gate. Then January Jop, Renee H., Spunky Steph, Kathy Chapin, Lady Creations, Lee Reddy, <laughs> Rhea Mazarone, Michelle Kobe, Spunky Steph, Mama 457 Rose, Lisa Valenzuela, 13 months, Kylie, um, Allie Kate, Whiskey Boots, Ginger Keys, Mama 457 Rose, and Eugenie gifted five memberships. Very, she gives a lot of memberships out. Thank you, Eugenie. And uh, Pixie Blue and Sirius Black. And she lives in the same state I do. 
She's lucky she doesn't live in Portland, though. It's the, uh, it's just god awful down there. Uh, Alley Cake, Sirius Black, Amber Maiden, Kubi, Lisa Holland, and who's been here for 51 months. Thank you. Laney Dune, or Lane Dune. <laughs> a blank slate, gifted a membership. Cindy J, Cindy J. Mama four fifty seven rows. Cindy J is fully on board the family did it train. Mama four fifty seven rows. Oddball, Pixie Blue, Kylie, Half Rudder, Eugenie, Heather N, Wise Child, Kathy Chapin, Georgina Stoliker, Wise Child, Paulette Leonard, Georgina Stoliker, Richard Watts, Rhonda Brand, Rad Story. Leah Baker, Cynthia N, Scott Holland, and Scott Holland, 37 months. That's a long time. That's three years and something. And Scott Holland gifted five memberships. Also, uh, wishing your mom well, Scott Holland. Then I gifted five memberships. Then Timothy Cecil, and then Zozo matched Timothy Cecil, and then Rad Story to end the evening. Right, and then we have over in the uh, the other side over here. Now oh, we got uh, Sandy Shirley, Sweetbriar, and just a friend. <laughs> very cool. All right. Anyways, thank you guys very much. Appreciate your. Uh, Support keeping us on track here. We got uh, Maybe I should make a video out Just about that location uh, You know inside the house where the bedrooms were and You know, maybe throw out some speculation on where he may have gone. I know it won't sit well for all the haters out there I mean, it's almost a vigil and I'm not saying that there isn't a chance that they might be involved at some point but I think at this point, given what the police have said, isn't it worthwhile now to look at this from a different angle? It should be, but people aren't accepting it. They want to look, keep digging and finding every little error. I must, it must be hard to be one of those people, walking around knowing that you can't even speak. If you went to McDonald's and said, could I have a cheeseburger, I mean hamburger? They go, why did he say cheeseburger first? Did you hear that? Oh my God, that's incredible. Did you catch that, you guys? He said cheeseburger, but he meant hamburger. Oh my God, he must be the killer then. Now we did, Sandy, we nailed it. Thank you. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can't... It, it, Hey, hey, Risa Simpson, if they're not involved, will you apologize to them publicly? I'll give you, I'll even give, give you a mic on here, okay? Will you apologize, do a show and come on and apologize publicly to them? I'm just curious. Okay, good, all right. I'll expect to see you over here. Uh, because I didn't agree. <laughs> That's crazy. See, I don't mind if people can say what they they if they want to say in here. I think, and by the way, Risa Simpson, if you're in here, we don't allow you to say that somebody you don't you can't make declarative statements like that. You can say, "I think they did it," or "My opinion is that they did it." But when you say they did it, that means you absolutely have the answer, and that's not you don't so. Um, Right, that's how it works. Now watch, Zozo's going to type in. <laughs> that's her, though. That's what she does. Anyways, thanks uh, for being here, everybody. We'll see you guys tomorrow, all right? And thank you all for watching. I hope you guys have a great rest of the evening. And we'll be back at it tomorrow, okay? <laughs> so thanks <laughs> you do too you always have that do the opposite of what I say alright well thanks everybody we'll see you guys tomorrow and as I always say until next time 
be safe out there. And a one and a two and a three. Yeah, I've been doing this true crime thing for quite a while now. And during this whole time, I have not seen one person that is a crime dissector, flag rejector, I'm a certified human lie detector, gonna get ya on a stretcher if you try and play me like an old projector. Crime sector is my nectar, Professor Gray is gonna give another lecture, crime collector, freak connector, and I'm always gonna be a pup protector, fool deflector, interceptor, and I'm meaner than a spectre with a vector on his pecker. With all respect, y'all Just remember I have a temple fucking check, ya. I have no agenda I'm no pretender And no service to your straight without the blender And in the end, I'm gonna send ya On a mission to reveal a true offender Good night, everybody get right back to work Alright, everybody Yay! Alright Well, thanks We'll see you guys tomorrow And, you know, just try to you know, expand. I, I fully admit, everybody, that it's possible that the parents or somebody have something to do with something in the future, but currently there is no information to suggest that. So we're going to try to look at this case the way we look at all the other cases. And at some point, if there's other information that comes out, I have no problem switching over that and saying, oh, wow, look at this. You know, it's no, bi it's no big deal, okay? But I think it's irresponsible to just look at the case the whole time as if the parents had something to do with it when he could be that's why they're going back here that's why they're going back they're starting over basically uh how far away was who what does that even mean all right thanks everybody and be safe out there